All right, fabulous. So well, welcome everyone. Uh, we are going to introduce to you Hope White, an amazing, amazing speaker. She gives so much to everyone every, all the time. Her and Alfredo, who is also on the call uh, with Alfredo's Coffee House every uh, Sunday at uh, noon Eastern, uh, tune in, is uh, gonna be able to speak right now. And her keynote speech is uh, gonna be Know Your Rights. So Hope, we appreciate you. Thank you very much for everything. And uh, we're gonna let you take it away. Okay, Cindy, did you see my message? So I have this handout, everyone. It is a quick reference guide created just for this conversation. Um, so one of the things people don't know about me because everyone just thinks, oh, hope this federal junk. Um, one of the things that I started doing very early on in my life um, is find out about all disability things. What does it mean? What are the legal things? What, are the, what is my right? And I'm saying that because there's pretty much just a few kinds of people work, walking around on this earth. Number one, you could have been born with a disability, which means you're used to your disability and you, you, you have adjusted because you didn't know anything else. Um, and then there's that, that group of people who have been living life a period of time and then they get severely injured and then they're living with the disability. And then you have the group of people who are aging and because they're aging, they end up with disabilities. Um, so for a lot of us who are service-connected disabled veterans, it means that we, we had some kind of traumatic event, whether it's mental or physical, but in the end, the result was the same. We are now disabled people. So you're still a disabled veteran, even if you don't have a claim in, because nobody gets through this whole process and not come out with something because, well, it's not a normal environment. So what I wanted to do was to make sure that when you um, are going to different things, when you acknowledge that you're disabled or when someone points it out to you, because um, that happens, um, that you actually know how to handle it. And I'm saying that because I've seen it go wrong many times. Um, one of the things that we um, as veterans do is we share a lot of our information with other people. And this is one that I wouldn't share at work. I wouldn't talk about disability at work and what your personal disabilities are. And the reason why I say that is because they can be used against you. How is that possible, Hope? People wouldn't be that mean and cruel. Yes, because people are competing against you for jobs and resources and all kinds of things. They love to discredit you um, so then they can look better. I will give you one example and then I'm gonna move to the <laughs> to this magical sheet here. So, so basically, imagine, imagine we're in a work environment, a full, wonderful mahogany table, and there's a room full of people, and um, someone just says about someone else something very negative, that it doesn't matter if they were disabled, if they were a veteran, that the response could only be <laughs> uh, anger and frustration. Uh, but in this case, the person, the veteran, had already shared with the coworker that they do have PTSD and that they had some violent incidents and that they are on medication. And so, even though that's just something I was upset with the per what the person said, um, we all were like, wait a minute, what just happened? And the woman, instead of acknowledging that she had said something that was rude and inappropriate, then proceeds to tell all of us that he must not be on his meds because he was angry. And that she didn't know what to do and she, she backed up and act like she was scared because you know, he's a veteran and I don't know, I couldn't believe the production. I was like, oh, and the Emmy goes to. Okay, so he didn't know what to do because he could not believe that just happened, but, I was there and I know what to do. And I made sure that she understood never to do that again. I'm saying that because every time we divulge information about ourselves, um, I'm at 10%, I'm at 20%, I'm at 30%, I'm at 100%, whatever the percentage is, um, people wanna know, well, what is it for? And so the more you talk, the more information you give people to use against you in the workplace. So, if one day I show up, you know, 
I was injured when I was 20. So I've been living with my disability for 30 years. It has gotten progressively worse. I didn't want it to be that way. I thought it would be fixed, but this is what I have. And so, um, so if I work five years and I show up with a cane, and now people want to know, well, why are you using a cane? Oh, what happened? Did you fall down stairs? Like they're thinking something recently happened. Um, they're not aware that I've been living with this this whole time and was avoiding using a cane the whole time. They don't know that. What I'm saying is that you have a right as a disabled person to do whatever it is that you need to do to get through your life. If, that, if that's a walker, if that's a handicap placard, if that's a handicap license plate, all those things are at your fingertips to help you in your daily life. The other part of it is what people say, and that's what we really need to deal with. How do we deal with, um, oh, I can't show my screen. <laughs> so if anybody just puts that document on the screen, that's fine. Um, so what I want to do is give you a, a quick reference guide. You use this for yourself. You use this for your employer. If your employer is aware that you're a disabled person and you need accommodations, you need help to do some of the things that are assigned to you. For example, um, if part of your job is moving 20 pounds of something and you can't move 20 pounds, um, what do you do? I can tell you I can move 20 pounds of anything, 40 or 50 or 90 or 100 pounds of something. You know why? Because I asked for help. <laughs> Immediately. There's two things I set up when I start at, at a job. Number one, I tell my supervisor just enough of what they need to know to support me to do my job. And the other one is I always need someone who's willing to pull, push, bring, carry things for me. So you have to acknowledge that you have a disability and then determine what you need to be successful in your workplace. What is it gonna take? For me, it's just somebody who's willing to carry something. And every now and then, if I travel, I need my supervisor to be willing to pay for me a larger seat, which is business class. And I need a bigger car because I'm already tall, which you can't see, but um, I need some space because I have some issues like claustrophobia, which means I don't wanna be in a tiny little car right? So whatever the issues that you have, you need to be adjusting in your life to accommodate yourself. You have to acknowledge that they're disabilities. The other part of that is you need to go get evaluated and get the money that you need to survive as a disabled person. Your family deserves the extra income. Your children deserve whatever money they're given. My children tied my shoes for 10 years straight because I couldn't even bring my leg up to do that. So this is the other part of disability that people don't talk about, and that's the day-to-day -day lifestyle. What do I have to do? So let's talk about, um, is it up? I can't tell if it's up. It is? Okay. It is, yeah. Okay, so where is it in my world? So I can see it. So I'll know. Okay, there we go. All right, so what's on this sheet is basically information for you as a person with disability, um, if you go down to the second page, I know it's weird to start on the second page, but the most important part, keep going, it, are these websites here. This one website here, Guide to Disability Right Laws. Can you click on that for me? Basically, whatever the laws are that protect you as a person with a disability, they're going to be on this website for you to re reference whenever it is that you need it. I fit into a lot of these categories. Um, I am uh, a woman, I am African-American, I am disabled, I am a veteran, I'm over 40. There's a lot of ways people can discriminate against me. And so the question is, um, are they? Because sometimes we call things discrimination when it's just not discrimination. This makes it clear. The American with Disabilities Act is there for you to reference, to learn it, to understand it, so you can then teach other people because when they cross the line, you, you need to tell them that they're crossing the line. So fair housing, if you're disabled and people don't want you to live there for whatever reason, that's an issue. All of these things are there and I'm not gonna go through all of them, I don't have enough time, but you need to be aware of where to go to look. Um, if someone makes a fat joke, did you know obesity is considered to be a disability and is protected by the American Disabilities? Act? So, all these things, you need to know what your disabilities are, 
And if someone says something to you that sets you off uh, because it's offensive, it's negative, and, and they have no business saying it, then you need to have some resources to go to, not just they hurt my feelings, but where do you go? They broke the law. That's what they did. They broke the law. And they usually are breaking the policies and the regulations set, if, depending on if you're in the federal government or you're in a corporation, everybody has laws that protect you, um, of course, because we're in the United States. But a lot of them have, all, they have policies as well that are built into their culture. And so then it's two ways. They're violating, of course, the law, but also what was put in place to protect employees. Because when you go to work, you're not expecting for people to be offensive. You're not. The next one is the employer's practical guide to re reasonable accommodations. Reasonable accommodations is for anyone with a disability and you're having a hard time doing part of your job, not all of it. So when you look at a position description, whether wherever you go, the most important part is usually at the top. The major duties and responsibilities are usually at the top. And then there's some other things at the bottom. If you have trouble performing the things at the top, the major duties and responsibilities, there's a problem. There's a problem. So they are, they are not and do not have to give you reasonable accommodations in that case if you can't do the major parts of the job. However, everything underneath there that are minor parts of the job, they are supposed to give you reasonable accommodation. So what would that look like? Let's say that you, you are hard of hearing because I don't know, you have faulty um, ear protection. And so, you know, you refuse to get the, um, the, the help you need. Okay, so now we're all working with you, screaming at you in the, in the work environment, right? Because you refuse to get the help you need to live a normal life by getting help. You can get those free at the VA along with the batteries. What's the problem? So reasonable accommodations comes in when, for whatever reason, I'll give you my example. My first reasonable accommodation was at CDC. Um, I was a contractor and it's a big ginormous campus and part of my job I needed to, well, I didn't, I probably didn't need to, but my, I took it upon myself that I needed something signed. I'm going to their office to get it signed because the other part of it, sending it through the mail was ridiculous. And so it became very clear to me, because I can't walk across, that I need some help. And so they purchased for me a scooter. So I had my little red scooter. It's still there in the same building. And I would drive all over the campus with my little scooter. Everybody knew, boop, boop, here comes hope. Now, being in the scooter meant that I found some little faults there on the campus. There were places I couldn't get down the sidewalk. There were doors I couldn't open for myself. That's a problem because you shouldn't have to wait for someone to open the doors. It should be a button you press and the doors open up for you. Now, am I saying this? Are these laws, are these regulations? It's the federal government that's asking people to do this. It's, it's the same thing as when you drive up to a store, there's supposed to be so many handicapped spots, right? So for every 10, handi every, for every 10 parking spots, there's supposed to be one handicap spot. In major cities, it's two. Why am I saying all this? Because there are times that you have to become your own advocate. And if you're not sure and you don't know, then these resources will help you. Go back to the um, sheet, please. So this is for your employer to get the information they need. And reasonable means that it's reasonably priced. It's not something that's so outrageous. Um, but it can be expensive because if you're deaf, um, a signer can only sign for 30 minutes. So if it's an hour long meeting, you need two. These contracts should already be built in to what's going on. Nothing's gonna happen unless you say it. If you don't tell them you're hard of hearing and you use sign language. If you don't say anything, you don't get anything. The next one is the Employer Assistance and Resource Network on Disability Inclusion. Why is this important? It's important because with all the DEI, um, all the different ways they say it in the inclusion. We're usually the group that, that are excluded the most just because we don't have access. We don't have access to things that we should have access to. And sometimes that's just an interpreter. But you show up at the meeting, how can you contribute if you speak, if you, you can read everyone's lips, but for you to communicate, you have to write things out or sign. 
Well, who's stopping to give you a chance to hand out notes? Nobody. So that means you're not contributing. That's a problem. And it should be addressed by the, you to your supervisor about what you need to, to fulfill the, the responsibilities of your job. This is a great website to help you with all of that, to getting you, giving you an idea of what it is that you need to do, what equipment you need, what software do you need? Do you need the lighting adjusted above your head if you go into the office? All of those things can be done. There's no reason not to. The goal of the employer is to make sure you're successful in doing your job. So whatever it is that you need, if you need a pen, you need a chair, an ergonomic chair, whatever it is, a footrest, they're supposed to provide it for you. So when they don't do that, when you've spoken up, hey, I need these things to do my job, and they don't do them for you, then there's a problem. So what do you do? So what you do is, <laughs> don't call me. <laughs> I have enough people calling me about these things and I'm writing out prescriptions. This is what you need to say and do. These organizations are here to help you if there is a problem. Now, we're not going to get into EEO, which I probably should have, but we have limited time. But EEO is set up in every organization for these issues. If you feel like you're being discriminated against because of one of those issues that I named, and plus the, um, um, what's the one I always forget? The one I'm not. Oh, um, uh, what's the, well, I forgot how to say it. <laughs> uh, LGBTQ, anything like that. If you feel because of your day-to-day -day conversations with your coworkers or your supervisor that they're discriminating against you because of those things, if they are crass words, I have been called a black bitch in an official email in the federal government. Why was that? Why did that happen? It happened because I did my job. I took people's credit cards when they were using them for Macy's. You don't use government cards for that. Um, I shut people down because they were abusing their, their, their um, government cars. That's fleet management, I'm taking the car back. I did things that were not quite what they thought. And I, was, I don't play along to get along. I'm not a very good person to supervise. I'll just be honest with you. I'm gonna do the right thing every single time. And I'm not gonna be the one that's going to be accused of something. That means I like my cars, I like my house and my money. I'm not then paying something out to someone because I did something wrong in the federal government because that's what happens. My point is, no matter you're in the government, you're at Amazon, wherever you are, there is a process for EEO. Can I give you the biggest advice I can give you? Don't ever go through EEO. <laughs> ever. In your whole life, don't ever do it. You know why? because it's set up for the organization to succeed and not you. The first document that you, brought, you sign, basically you're signing away all of your rights and you agree to whatever mediation that they come up with when you start mediating. The problem is that third party is paid for by the organization. There's no third party. You need a lawyer. Don't do anything without a lawyer. I don't care if it's something so simple. There's a lawyer out there. There's, a lot of lawyers that would do things for free. A lot of things is just a letter they need to write and submit. What am I saying? None of the EEO process is set up for you to win. Not one part of it. I know I've been on different parts of it at different times. It's not there. So, and this is what you need to know. If possible, if you're dealing with any federal entity, only get a lawyer from DC that has a history of winning. Don't get a lawyer in your local community. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know the animal they're about to attack and how vicious they can be. I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> Been on all sides of these things. What am I saying? There are resources here. So my, this is the thing I'm always saying. It's the thing that Alfredo is always saying. You are not alone, and you shouldn't be going through these things alone. There are plenty of people who have the knowledge and the skills to get you through the process so that you come out on the winning end, whether it be money, a new grade, whatever the thing is, but it cannot be that you go through EEO. <laughs> I know you weren't expecting that, were you? Sitting, you should have seen your face like, what did you say? That's right. Never go through EEO. Get an attorney. That's the bottom line. Protect yourself and your family and your career at all times. All times. And you do that by having your own attorney who knows the game. And it is a game they're playing. But you want to be the winner of that game. Don't do this alone. First of all, you need to acknowledge you have disabilities. Number two, you need to go get your money. 
<laughs> Sorry, I got to go back to that. Because the older you get with your disabilities, the more complicated it becomes. All these accessible things in my home that I've had to pay for because I didn't want to deal with the VA, how much money did that cost me? A lot. Because it's, it's a new house, so there wasn't a lot of stuff in here. My other house I lived in for 20 years, as I got progressively worse, I could put things in place. I had, I missed the house so much. But anyway, in the new house, <laughs> I've had to put a lot of things in to help me. That means that I've had to pay out of pocket for it. Now, I would say that there, there's a special group of people in my life, that's the, the Alfredo Coffee House people, who challenged me not to buy an uh, electric wheelchair at the tune of $2,000, because of course I like nice things. I wanted to press the button and it folded itself down. And then I asked somebody to put it in the truck for me. I, Cause I don't want this big arm on my truck and things that identify me as disabled. That's why I don't have a dis disabled veteran plate. It says women's vet, a woman veteran, that's what it says. I have a placard because you can always use a placard if you don't want to identify yourself as being disabled. Where I come from, we don't identify ourselves as disabled. That's just like saying, come take our stuff you're going to win. So I don't do that. So the document that I've given you, let's go to the document and let's go to that area that says stop. Just because I know I don't have any more time probably because I don't look at time, I forget about it. Right here. So this technique here is awesome. I would have to say um, in um, on my curriculums and the things that I do, this is one of the things I found to be most helpful. I would love to say that this is what I did, but I did not but I wish I had this knowledge to use this process. Um, so basically this is when someone says something offensive to you and sometimes they know they're offensive or they're saying something illegal, they're doing something illegal and sometimes they, they don't know. Either way, I try to give them a little grace and give them an opportunity to understand what they just did. And I do that because I don't want to escalate something that doesn't need to be escalated because right now it's just between the two of us. If we can talk it out between the two of us and I can get you to understand what you said and why it was offensive and don't you ever say that again to me because that's how I follow up everything and then I smile. Don't ever say that to me again. I've said that throughout my whole career. Um, that's about being black. That's about being a woman because I have been the black, only black person and the only woman in the room a lot in my career. And so I had to put those things in place. Like, don't ever say that to me again. I don't care what y'all talk about when I'm not in the room, but you're not gonna ever say anything like this to my face and get away with it. So if I had the stop technique, <laughs> that probably would have been better because then it was, how dare you say these things to me, you lowly person. <laughs> but I can deal with that too. Bottom line, when people say things that are rude, state, let them know exactly what it is that they said. Okay, I will give you an example. In my last job, my supervisor knew I was a disabled person. And she asked me if I knew how to make a PDF. So if you know anything about me, yes, I do know how to make a PDF. <laughs> I remember when they came out, I did the training for it in my organization. My point is people don't know what kinds of disabilities you have. And so then, you know, it's, it's, it's the thing that happens. And so then, I divulge, I, I don't have delayed, I, I, you know, I, I, that's not my disability. It's more physical than anything. And so then at that point, I'm expecting you to change your tune. But if you don't, and you're just doing it to jab at me, then now we have a problem. And that, that's escalated to the next level. That means the supervisor, the supervisor, the supervisor, we all need to get together in a room and probably with HR, employee relations and have a conversation about what is being said and how it should never be said again. And how, under, understand when you're talking about these things that people have said, especially if they're in an authoritative position like supervisor or manager, they should know better. That's why if you ever choose to be a supervisor or manager or leader, you need to know other people's rights so you don't mess up. Because believe me, when people mess up, I'm not just going up, I'm not going after the agency. I'm going after everybody in that chain because they should have made sure this person had the training and never said anything like that to me. That means, yeah, I can sue everybody. Because again, I'm not going through EEO ever. I'm only suing people because litigation is what people understand. And they fear it. They fear losing their things. So I want them to fear losing their things to me <laughs> because of what they said. So tell, 
the offender, how you feel when he or she performs. So I, I got to admit, I don't leave with feeling. I never leave with feeling. Because most of the time, it's not that they've hurt my feelings. They have violated my rights. Those are two different things. I'll deal with my feelings when I get home with my husband. But right now, we're going to talk about the laws and the, you know, depending on the organization, all of the, the um, policies they have in place. You violated the law and the policy. When you come at it from that perspective, you're not emotional and irate and, you know, we don't know what the crazy veteran's going to do. You're just handling your business. We can talk about emotions later and I'll contact Alfredo to curse for me later. But up front, I'm going to be very professional. I'm going to let you know what you did, how you did it, and how we're going to fix it. And sometimes that means I need to be assigned somewhere else if they need to be assigned somewhere else because it, it can't fix. Because after you've called me the BB, you know what I said before, it was so hard to say that. <laughs> but after you said that officially in email, you're so bold to say that about me in email, then that's a whole nother level. Because that means you understand that this organization will protect you. Hey, that Hope. means, yes. Uh, can um, wind can up? You, yeah, we, we got to do questions and answers. Oh, questions? Oh, I forgot. To, well, we, I didn't know. We only, I have doing those. we only have fifteen minutes for that. Oh, okay. I didn't know I was doing questions too, but uh, whatever. Oh yeah. What's the question. All right. So if you have a question for Hope uh, about disabilities, about your rights, about um, you know, even disability um, uh, or VA ratings, um, go ahead and, uh, and raise your hand and we'll call on you as you raise your hand. If you don't know how to do it, you go down to reactions at the bottom of your screen and you just click raise hand. Um, Thomas, what do you got? Thanks, Brian. Uh, thank you, Hope. Great, great um, information you've told us so far. Quick, quick question. So I got a VA disability rating and all my disabilities. And then when I apply for jobs, I see oftentimes it's saying, hey, what are your disabilities? Are my VA connected disabilities tied to the disabilities you're asking about? Or, or mm -hmm. is that a separate disability sponsored by some other government organization that I have to get certified by or, or something? Disabled is disabled. You've already been certified, certified by a government agency. They very rarely would conflict or say, you know, well, the VA said I was disabled because of my boo-boo. Someone else is not going to come along and say, well, the VA was wrong. The bottom line is you have a you have a, a you have a choice. You can tell people what your disabilities are, or you can just say I have a disability. Most of the time, when you look, they want to get into your business because they have requirements within their organizations that they're trying to meet. If you're in the federal government, it's MD seven fifteen. They have to check how many veterans, how many black people, how many Hispanic. Like they have a list, literally, that they have to turn in every month. Companies are the same way. They keep about they keep their percentages of the demographics of their organization, and um, just understand if you're a corporation, you get some tax breaks if you hire people with disabilities, if you hire veterans, if you hire someone who's low income. They get so that's why they're trying to figure out who are you, what you're bringing to the table. Maybe we can get some money for you. So you don't have to divulge anything unless it. I, when I was in corporate America, only two people knew that I was disabled. But they didn't know I had a family either, because that's my business. If I'm in charge of a bunch of people, people don't know my personal business at all. So you get to decide, because remember, that's your health care, right? It's the, the other part of ADA is HIPAA. That means you don't have to divulge anything to anybody. You can say I'm a disabled person, but you don't have to go into the details. I recommend that you don't. It's none of their business. Because it, it, how can they help you? They can't. There's some way or shape or form that's going to come back negative on you. So keep it to be just your business. But whatever disabilities you have, that's what you have. That's what's wrong. Mm -hmm. well, that's Elijah? Awesome. Yeah, uh, I was going to say, I oh. think Sean was first, and then and then we'll get to Elijah. Okay. I'm sorry. I need to adjust my screen a little no, bit. No, no. We got you, Sean. Hey, thanks. Uh, hey, Hope. How you doing? Uh, good to see you again. I just wanted to ask, I, I love the acronym that you have there, STOP. And I, I was just looking at O for options and not not knowing like options as far as the law or what other options companies have in general, what would you say, you know, and I think maybe you alluded to it, like maybe you have to go somewhere else or that person has to go someplace else. But, you know, can you talk about what options you may have when you go through the, you know, that, that, that 
you know, and, and using that acronym. Thanks. Well, the first part of it is going to that um, guide to disability rights law on the second page at the bottom. Okay. And the reason why is you need to be able to identify what, what was the disability, what was the conflict, what was the law that was broken. And then you need to go to the HR website and find out what policy was broken. Those are the two things. That's how you fight it. That's how you organize yourself. Um, and you put it together, write it up. These are the things they violated. This is what said. These were the people in the room. And I'm all about proof because with EEO and anything else, you have to prove it yourself. It's, it's on you to prove it. So that's why we have cell phones to record things. That's why um, even at the Secret Service, I never signed that piece of paper that I wouldn't record anything. I don't sign that. It's not a mandatory document. And if anybody ever said anything to me about it, I let them know it's not a mandatory document. They say, oh, well, you have to. No, I don't. I don't sign things that, that work against me. And anytime I'm in an environment with other people, which is all the time on the job, anything could go wrong. So yeah, I'm gonna record the conversation because I wanna make sure I have a copy of it when you deny it. Because you gotta prove it. The onus is on you to prove it. So you have a cell phone to record. You can, whatever you need to do, that's what you should do. Because you're gonna have to prove it in the end. And so your options come out of whatever they did. And the policy is usually already in place. Okay. It still falls under EEO, but they will give you a thing, things that they're willing to do to help you. Remove you from that supervisor, move you to a new team, um, pay you, compensate you for your mental distress, whatever the thing is. <laughs> I've been able to give people a lot of money lately. <laughs> Let's just we don't need no, we don't need a new grade. Just give us give us cash. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Elijah. Oh, I think you're still on mute, my friend. Let's try it again. Thank you guys so much for your time. Um, I've learned so much. I, I appreciate I appreciate it so much that you guys have taken this time. Um, I am currently at 80% disabled veteran. I've uh, applied to uh, increase my disability rating with the with the um, burn pit stuff that's that just came out. I previously and I previously had filed for disability for that, for uh, stomach issues and stuff, but it got denied. Um, so when I go to refile, do I need to, um, do I need to? They, I walk just, in, they walk you through the whole process. You're probably gonna use the same records you turned in before. Okay. And update them. So are you in the VA system? Yes, ma'am. So you can go into My Healthy Vet and press the blue button and get all your files. And, and that's where it all, you need to work with someone. Are you pre 9-11 or post 9-11 veteran? What year did you get out? I got out in 2011. Okay, you're good to go. That means that you can go to some of the, the, the organizations like Wounded Warrior Project. They have a great claims department. They stick with you, they contact you, give you updates. They will convince you to not only put the burn pit stuff in there, but all of your secondaries. They're very good at it. I used to help people all the time. Um, and when I decided to change my focus, um, I believe me, I spoke to a lot of people at Wounded Warrior about their process and what they do. And then I felt comfortable enough to send people to them. First of all, their training is right where it should be. Everyone goes through the training at the higher level with the federal government. And that's one of the things that we need to look out for. Um, I kind of did the training, but I could not be certified because I was a contractor. Actually, I didn't even work at the VA at the time. There was an email situation anyway. But what I can say is, um, I'm hoping that you will go through the whole process because you need to get beyond 80% and 90% and 100 to well, it's just permanent. Because what you don't want to do is have to keep going back again and again. Mm. And between things getting worse and um, secondaries, yes, make sure you let them know you want and scars and all these little things. I forgot I had this scar over here from the from basic training. It's it's almost gone, but not quite after 30 years. Do everything you can because the the worse you get, the less. I mean, last year I missed out on 
um, altogether 26 days of work because of my disability issues. Some of that was leave without pay because I ran out of leave. So that money help, still helps my family is what I'm saying. But sometimes nah. it's just that way. I can't believe it. That's that's what I'm trying to that's what I'm trying to do is set my family up for success because I've I've wasted I, I, I'm I'm I got out in 2011 I'm still in my transition I'm still in my transition I'm with the uh, voc rehab right now mm -hmm. and um, um, it's 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 been such a difficult process this entire thing has just been absolutely uh so elijah this is what i want to say to you sometimes the the whole process is so weighty and so long and so complicated that we need a person to go through it with us we need an advocate and so they're out there um there's videos there there are individuals who will um jane is jane going to be on the day is jane here i'm sorry my man went of course to jane um can someone put jane's information in there so Jane is someone who retired from the, the Veterans Benefits Administration, and this is all she does is help veterans. She will hold your hand, she will answer your questions, because depending on your disability, um, you need extra help. I'll, I'll use myself as an example. I don't need help with my resume. I can do that. But I know that there's some people who do need help, but then there's some people who can't do it at all. It's not to say they can't do a federal job, they just can't do a resume. I will do their resume if you have any kind of traumatic brain injury, if you have anything that's going to hinder you from understanding all the words I say on all of, my, all of my webinars, I will sit on Zoom and we'll do it together. I don't care if it takes six or 10 hours, we're going to get through it. So you need someone like that. So let's kick you off with one person who can get you through voc rehab. Can somebody put here is information in there? So here is a, um, is a military spouse and that is her specialty. Anything academic, and anything voc rehab, she can help you through it. Okay, okay, that's that's, awesome. that's what I. Yeah. Well, I have okay. nothing but smiles right now. Thank you, Cindy. <laughs> oh. You're not by yourself, Elijah. That's why you can't do not this by all. yourself. Not find at your all. find your team or your squad. That's what I'm always saying. Find your squad. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure you'll learn about a lot more things uh, in the breakout room. Alfredo, looks like you're the last one, my friend. Before we get moving in to the rest all of right. the event. All right. Hey, Hope, first of all, thank you so very much. Um, you, you put out some great information. You let people know to take advantage of the laws that are there for them and also to, um, uh, to, to, to be an advocate for themselves. Mm -hmm. I want you real quick to talk about the person themselves. So let's say me, I got a disability, mm -hmm. but I'm, but, but I don't want to admit it. I, I don't want to talk about it. I, I don't know I, anything I, about that. Yeah. You know, I, I have that, that mental block or, you know, yeah. I'm a, I, I'm a veteran. I'm, I'm going to yeah. go through this. How, how do you recommend we start to come out of that shell so that we can uh -huh. go okay. after what's good for us? So again, I came out, I was 20, I was injured in basic training. I'm one of those people, but I was able to finish basic training and get to AIT and take a PT test, which someone helped me with. That's another story. And so then because I passed the PT test, that means I could finish AIT. Um, I couldn't decide if I wanted to go active duty or reserves. So I had already started drilling with this, this unit here in Metro Atlanta. They called my sergeant. He simply says, train my soldier and send her back. So I got to stay in. I was the only one in my in my unit with a dead man's profile. I was the only one in the battalion. Let's just be honest about it. Um, and I was there for five years and um, uh, five years and nine months. And um, but the, the hardest part of all of this is that it happened to me when I was 20. So that means that in the wheelchair situation, see how that went? I had to face a lot of things. So when I was, remember, I'm still on duty. I, I found out my disabilities. Um, this, it started the second day I got to AIT. They sent me to, to seven hospitals. Two weeks later, I came back to Fort Benjamin Harrison to my program. 
by that point, they had decided all the things that were wrong with me and I was 20. And of course, I'm not accepting any of that and nor am I accepting any of the surgeries you wanna do on me. My point is, it is progress, but it's also um, things are falling apart. <laughs> it was very hard for me to accept it. I kept going to, I had, I worked in corporate America, I had excellent insurance. I was going to specialists. I went to uh, three of the doctors for the Hawks, <laughs> Atlanta Hawks, sports medicine. I was like, look at my ankle, look at my knee. What can we do to patch it up, make it better so that it doesn't get to the point? I was refusing to accept it. Meanwhile, I was at 10% because someone did my paperwork so that when I came back, I could go to the VA because I needed to start pain management, physical therapy. And because I met an awesome nurse, I needed to start with mental therapy about the loss of everything. Because I was always a physical person, basketball, volleyball, tennis, swim. That's what I did through high school. I, I have... You know, I was, before I went into military, I was lifting. I had a very, everything was beautiful and, you know, <laughs> anyway. So the loss of it, there's a loss. But at some point and through therapy, through your family, you have to acknowledge something is wrong and go take care of it as best you can. It may not be fixed. It may not be fixed. In which case you got to live with it. But don't be like me and wait and fight the fight and see another specialist and specialist specialist. And then I never went back and got my disability rating increased because I always saying I'm going to get better. Why should I do that? Just a few years ago when I was at the VA working as an employee, I was challenging everyone around me to go through the process and get their money. And then I had one lady who sat at my desk and she said, Hope, I'm not moving until you put your intent to file in. That so is so I great. The, yeah. um but uh, i think we're running out of time oh, oh yeah well, so you know, I can go before on. before we leave though how can people get a hold of you and tell us how uh they can get a hold of you with hopeful speaking uh it's at the bottom of the sheet all right Hope at I, the bottom of the sheet that's so, right linkedin it's always linkedin for me <laughs> linkedin uh hope thank you so very much uh we appreciate everything and uh we're gonna get right into our first poll of the day and so we'll throw this poll up on the screen. Uh, and this is for all the uh, job seekers. Uh, can everyone see the poll? Yep. All right. So go ahead. And if we've ever connected you to a job or if you've received a job through Vets to Industry, uh, go ahead and let us know. Uh, we got one for the recruiters coming up in a little bit. And uh, we're getting some great uh, LinkedIn or some uh, great data here on the poll. So we appreciate you. But uh, I'm going to keep the poll up for probably another 30 seconds. And Tom from V School is going to be on right after uh, this to tell us about V School, some scholarships. And then we're going to get uh, into Lee and then all the recruiters. So exciting times. Well, that is awesome. Looks like we got uh, the poll done. We thank you very much for all that. Going to go ahead and head and, and uh, end that poll now. And Tom. Are you still with us? I saw you earlier. I'm here. Tom, welcome. Okay. Thank you. And uh, let's let's talk about V School and I think the Forever Scholarship and a full ride scholarship, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, sir. So we're super pleased to announce the partnership with uh, Vesta Industry. Right now, V School has a full ride scholarship for a twenty-one thousand uh, dollar tuition for the program. So that scholarship is fully paid for through the Vesta Industry. Um, we are super pleased to be partnered with you guys. The, the whole point is to really help give back to community wherever we can. We've definitely seen Vets Industry as one of those uh, organizations doing a lot at the forefront for helping veterans transfer into whatever it is they're doing post separation. You know, and I'm honored to be you know able to speak to, with all of you today about this. Um, I'm sure if you meet with me in any of these breakout rooms, I would love to kind of go through some of the details with you. But I'll be posting links to the Full Ride Scholarship. Um, so if any of you are interested, um, you can either reach out to me on LinkedIn or go directly through uh, the link that I will be sending. OK, um, but yeah, I don't know how much time I have as well. That was perfect. Uh, I threw the uh, the uh, specific link in there that I think you're referencing uh, into the chat. So you want to check out uh, that scholarship. That'll be great. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, let me say something real quick. Yeah, get in there, Brian. So. Uh, um, our partnership with B-School is extremely important. Um, 
I'm very, very excited that we actually uh, you know, were able to partner up. They have some amazing, an amazing boot camp uh, for things like uh, what full stack developers. Um, I think they're starting up a Python um, soon. And you want yes. to tell us a couple, couple other of the uh, certifications that you get out of vSchool? Yeah, so right now we have two main programs. We have, like you said, a web development program, which focuses on the MERN stack under JavaScript. So that's about 80% of all web-based development uh, right now through that training. We have a UX, UI, or user experience, user interface program as well. That's kind of more of the front end, you know, being the face of figuring out kind of uh, how your app works, you know, what your clients want, what your customers want, you know, really getting down into the itty gritty human-esque of uh, app development. And then we're working on our cybersecurity program, which will be coming out Q1 of next year. Uh, we've got a lot of really good things coming down the pipe here. Um, you know, our whole thing at B-School is we don't consider you graduated until we get you into the job. We work with you guys from, you know, day one till, you know, you're, you've got that 70K starting salary typically. That's kind of the average that we're seeing for our students kind of post um, uh, graduation is around 70 grand. Um, we're seeing about 87% of our students pick up um, jobs within the first six months of completion as well. So if any of you are transitioning or looking to get into tech, you know, tech belongs to everyone. You know, it's one of those great jobs where you can work remote. You know, you're open to the nation's kind of uh, uh, whatever, whatever's hiring essentially. So if, like I said, if you are interested in it, love to have a conversation with you, love to make the space and answer any questions that you may have. And yeah, we, we got one, one question. Chat. Yep, about, yep. Uh, is there anything with cloud computing with vSchool? Not yet. We are looking into cloud computing, but right now our priority is getting our cyber uh, pathwaying stuff sorted. Um, but that will be, cloud computing is definitely on our radar of things that we're going to be looking at. Um, it's just right now, definitely cyber is at the forefront because that's what we're seeing most people wanting to get into anyways. Uh, but cloud computing is amazing. Well, that's awesome. Tom, thank you so much for showing up for B-School. We hope that you uh, stick around uh, for some of the breakout rooms. Uh, but up next, we got about three minutes uh, for Lee. And as you're hearing Lee talk uh, about his experience, uh, recruiters, go ahead and start raising your hand and we'll start calling you uh, uh, right after Lee gets done speaking. And yeah, so Lee, hello and welcome. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Lee, I'm a Navy veteran. I've got a background in psychology. Uh, I'm real big on psychological safety and mental and emotional health in the workplace. Um, so I just want to talk real quick uh, about the transition process and some things that go along with that. So, you know, everybody talks about transition like it's the first time you've ever done this, but your entire life is a string of transitions. I mean, you went from, you know, child to adult, you know, you went from your mama's house or your dorm to boot camp or OCS, you know, you found out that that thing you thought was a trash can was actually an alarm clock. You know, there's all these things that you learn differently. You know, you went to your new duty stations and everything else. So you've transitioned one time after another. This is just another one in that string. Don't, don't let it get into your head too much. You can do this. Uh, you have been doing this. Now that leads me to the second thing. Uh, and it's something that I, I, I had to remind myself, you know, get ready to retire. Things are great, got a job lined up, family's good, you know, we're, we're good financially. Why do I not feel that? And so I had to go back to my, to my studies and everything and, and, and think about that. And it, and it reminded me that change brings loss. We said it again, change brings loss. Positive change also brings loss. And you don't think about that because this is a great thing. I should be happy. This is the job of my dreams. Why am I not feeling it? Well, let's see, you had, you know, your best friend you used to work with, now you don't anymore. You know, you got a twice the length of your commute that you used to have. That great little cafe you love to have lunch every Friday, you can't go to anymore. You know, there's all these things. Maybe you had to move and you left a house that you love, like Hope talking about her house that she had to move out of that she loved. You know, those are losses in your life. You have to realize that and you have to process it and you have to accept it and you have to mourn it and once you've done that once you process through those stages of grief and you go okay so what i'm feeling is normal 
what I'm feeling is natural and it's okay. And then I can feel upset that I'm not going to be sitting in the desk next to, you know, whoever anymore. So now I've processed that. Now I can get more excited. Now I can look forward to what's going on. Now I can be moving positively. But you got to accept that first, because I'm sure we've all been there. You get that feeling in the pit of your stomach. You're like, why am I upset about this? This is a good thing. Well, that's why. So uh, I know we've only got a couple of minutes and I've probably gone long already. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. But just think through that. Um, if you, if you want to talk about it, connect with me. I'd be happy to chat with you. Um, and Brian, thanks for the time. That is awesome. Thank you so very much for sharing that, Lee. We're going to get right into recruiters, and I know he's busy, so we're going to put him to the front of the line because he's out there helping everyone. Chip, hello and welcome. Chip from FEMA, you're first. Thank, thank you very much. This is Chip Lankert with FEMA. Good afternoon, B2I. Glad to be here uh, with you guys today. I apologize. I'm going to be here in and out. I'm down here in Puerto Rico in the uh, town of Isabella, and we're providing uh, disaster recovery support down here. But I didn't want to take, uh, didn't want to miss the opportunity to help you guys in transition. So if you have any interest in joining the federal government, please reach out and connect with me. My goal is to help make your transition into the federal government easier. And even if it's not with the federal government, let me connect you with people that can help you. Again, Chip Lanker with FEMA. Let me make your transition from the military to this government sector an easy one. Appreciate Chip, you're, Chip. Chip, oh. you're in the land of my people. I yes, I that. am, and um, loving the food. <laughs> yeah, all Matt, right. sorry to cut you off. No, but... no, not at all. Chip, thank you very much for everything. All right, uh, Jordana, hello and welcome. You're next. Hey, guys, this is Jordana from the Recon Network. It's good to see y'all. Um, I apologize for any background noise. I'm at a regional band competition pulling double duty right now, so... But I didn't want to miss the opportunity to tell everybody about the Vet Summit that's coming up November 3rd and 4th. Um, and thank you guys, BTY, Brian, for letting me jump in real quick and let me uh, tell everybody about it. So we have, if you enjoyed hearing Hope, you'll hear her again. We've got 12 other speakers coming in. Um, there is networking. There's a resource expo. Everyone who registers get a free uh, career choice GPS uh, career assessment um, from one of our sponsors, Smart Work Network. On Friday, there is a hiring companies lunch and learn only with Buffer Springs. And then um, there is also, this is the big thing that I wanted to mention to this group. If you are a VSO, if you serve veterans in any way, profit, nonprofit, et cetera, et cetera, you can get a free booth in our, re, uh, in our expo um, for nothing. So I will put all of the links, registration links, HR luncheon links, and the link to get a free booth if that's something that you're interested in everything is virtual and it is all free so i hope to see a lot of you there really excited about this year it's going to be awesome and hopefully i'll get to jump into some of these chat rooms in a little bit where is it it's all virtual it's all online so i'll i'll put in the links here in just a second awesome that is awesome thank you very much and absolutely and next up uh from johnson and johnson delinia hello and welcome like tumble dry in the dryer or hang all hi there i don't know what's going on in someone's dryer but y'all better get that <laughs> <laughs> um hey so uh i'm with johnson johnson um i have been helping veterans transition the civilian sector for about six years um, I love getting as many veterans as I can on the plates in front of hiring managers or recruiters. So um, definitely connect with me if you apply to any of the recs that I post. Um, make sure please to message me and let me know that you did in the rec number. So that way I can make sure to either A, if I'm a recruiter of it, make sure your resume gets the hiring manager. Um, or B, if I'm not the recruiter, then I can send a message to that recruiter to let them know that you applied um, and to look out for your name. So um, definitely connect on LinkedIn. Um, I could, I, I'm sure that everyone's gonna emphasize how important that is. Um, that's where the recruiters and the hiring managers are. Managers are. That's where I post my recs. Um, so definitely uh, get out there 
don't hesitate to reach out. I accept all connection requests from veterans and from military spouses. On a side note, if I send um, you a Teams invite, uh, so that way we can connect, please make sure you are on your laptop. Um, that's why I ask what your availability is and your preference. Um, so please make sure that when we do schedule a Teams invite so I can help you with your resume or you know whatever you need help with, you are on a laptop. That's what I got. Thanks, guys. That is awesome. Thank you so much for everything. Uh, people were re-asking for your links. So if you could drop those down below. And hello, Marisol, you're in next. Hello and welcome. Hello, everybody. My name is Marisol Maloney. I'm a Navy veteran, a mill spouse, and I'm also a recruiter for Fire AST. Um, I recruit for mostly Intel analysts with top secret cleared um, clearances and also um, financial analysts. Um, I'm a veterati mentor, so you can catch me on if you need some mentorship. And I transitioned out of the military almost three years ago, so I understand um, the anxieties that people go through when they're getting out of the military. So if you just need someone to talk to, uh, try to book an appointment with me on veterati. I haven't released any new appointments, so I'm a little um, behind on that. Um, but yeah, follow me on LinkedIn. I always put out free resume tips and transitioning advice for military and also for male spouses. So make sure you check out my posts and hopefully you'll find them help, helpful. So talk to you guys later. Thank you so very much for that. We appreciate you. Uh, up next, Kimberly. Hello, welcome to next. Hi everyone, um, I'm happy to be back. My name is Kimberly. I am a financial literacy coach with Revolution Financial Management. So our team specializes in helping families become financially free and independent. I'm in all areas in life. So we are looking for new coaches throughout the U.S. Uh, we have opportunities that service all 50 states, part-time, full-time, um, and we do have remote opportunities. There's no need for a finance background or anything like that. We do teach and train you and coach you how to do that. Um, and it is a licensed profession as well. I will specify that. Um, or if you have an entrepreneurial mindset, you want to learn how to build a business from the ground up please reach out. Or if maybe you need help on the finance side, please reach out. I'm happy to help. I um, also became a mentor on American Court for Partners recently. So I'm very excited for that. Um, but or if you just want to network, I'm happy to pay it forward in any way that I can. Looking forward to connecting with you guys. Well, thank you so very much. We appreciate that. Uh, Ken, hello and welcome. You're next. Hey, Matt. Thanks. It's great to be here. Hey everyone, I'm Ken Killingsworth. Uh, I support the talent acquisition efforts for Watco. I'm also an Army veteran and uh, I used to be right where you all are sitting, right here on V2I, uh, not too long ago. So uh, so look, I, I'm, I absolutely got lots of great career opportunities. I'll share a few, with, a few of them with you right now. Uh, I've got some corporate positions. I've got uh, four people service managers, which is kind of what we use as we call our HR positions across the nation, um, a facility manager position, a business intelligence project manager position, which is really looking for PMP, some agile uh, training uh, with some information technology background, uh, as well as an operations manager position and a recruiter in Houston, Texas. Um, and then of course we've got um, several trade positions, Watco owns and operates about 44 short line railroads, as well as about 100 marine terminals and about 10 large ports where we do transload from moving freight by ground, air, and boat. So look, um, I'm always an advocate for our veterans. We've actually hired three people uh, from this, uh, from veteran, from V2I right here, this event right here. One is uh, in business development at our corporate headquarters. So. Uh, reach out to me. I'll put my link in the chat. Thank you so very much, Ken. And that is amazing to hear uh, the value uh, for folks that are able to attend. And up next, adding even more value, Jess, hello and welcome. You're next. Hi. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? Awesome. Awesome. All right. So my name is Jess Miller and I'm a I'm a DNI program manager at Veterans United Home Loans. Um, a part of big part of my role is that I do recruitment, retention, and I'm a veteran advocate at VU. I am a veteran myself, um, as well as a military spouse. 
so I really like to make sure that our military connected talent uh, knows about us. So anyhow, we have um, we have opportunities at Veterans United Home Loans. Um, we have branch opportunities all over. Um, and we also have SkillBridge, a SkillBridge program that we do. Um, right now, uh, it's it, and this is all pretty new for us. So we've got SkillBridge opportunities in San Diego, San Antonio, and those are kind of at capacity right now. However, Columbia, Missouri, if there's, if anyone gets an itch to be in the middle of the Midwest, uh, please contact me. Uh, so we have that. And there's also, inter in addition to the other opportunities, there's internships that are really great. Uh, you know, we have, we have a couple different internships. So anyway, if you guys, I've got my, uh, my teammate Arnez here, he'll speak in a few and kind of talk about us a little bit, um, kind of who we are and also our sister company, Neighbors Bank in that remote role that we have. So I'll let him kind of jump into that a little bit, but I'm gonna put my links in the chat. You guys can feel free to connect with me. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. And thank you so much, Matthew. Absolutely. And uh, we look forward uh, to having more conversations in the breakout rooms. Uh, but up next, Jeff. Hello and welcome. You're next. Hey, thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Uh, good to see everyone here. Uh, many friends in the crew. I'm Jeff Weber, a vet and retired intelligence officer. I'm the founder and lead recruiter for heirloom.cloud. We're a technology startup with an enormous mission. Um, Heirloom is digitizing the world to include old VHS cassettes and any other type of media. So we, we leave no memory left behind. We have career opportunities that start through our very robust skill bridge program. Most internships are remote. We will train you. We will get you certified in cloud computing, data analytics, marketing, sales service, and even fulfillment operations here on our East Coast uh, facility in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, thank you for being in attendance. I love these. Congratulations on networking uh, opportunity number 35. I'll put my uh, information in the chat now. Thanks, everyone. Jeff, we that's great. You, Jeff. Yeah, it is. Yeah, um, I'm excited to see how many people uh, reach out to you. So uh, it should be quite a few cyber people in the in this event so uh you should have a full a full inbox soon we need to help brian thank you absolutely thank absolutely. you absolutely and next uh steven from verizon thank you very much for joining us today you're next thanks for having me matt so it's a real blessing this is my first time coming on here in the recruiter capacity but i have utilized v2i for uh mentorship in my transition which happened earlier this year uh, I am the SkillBridge recruiter for Verizon. I'm one of a six member team that's dedicated to bring in ver uh, veterans on board this company. This company is a huge employer of veterans. 8% of this company at about 140,000 employees are veterans. So you figure 8% of 140,000, that's a lot of veterans working for Verizon. Uh, we are the second largest telecom in company in the entire world. Um, so what that means for a veteran, that means opportunities for growth. They have great benefits. It's a very inclusive culture. And, you know, something that I was looking for during my transition, I actually came through Verizon as a skill bridge, uh, was work-life balance. So if that's something that you're looking for to go along with those benefits and a company that doesn't just say they're veteran friendly, but actually walks the walk of being veteran friendly, um, I'll keep posting my information in the chat. Uh, we recruit for over 100 different career fields, ranging from HR, program, project management, um, cyber, red team, blue team, network operations, full stack, you know, whatever, whatever your forte is, um, please connect with me. I accept everybody, uh, follow me on LinkedIn. I post a lot of good gold nuggets pretty often. Um, just, just G whiz daily veterans, helpful stuff. And if I can ever be of assistance, please let me know. Also one last thing before I drop, if you fill out the SkillBridge information form, I actually will schedule a one-on-one -on -one session with you and we'll go over your resume. I'll bump it up against some job descriptions you're looking at with Verizon and we'll kind of help get you tailored up. That is, that awesome, is awesome. Steve. Hey, Steve, it's great to see you here. It's great to see Verizon here. Um, you know, hoping uh, 
and uh, B2I and Verizon can do some some more things in, in the future. And I'll be I'll be reaching out to you. Thank you. All right, you. and we're gonna hear more uh, from the previously mentioned Arnez. Hello yeah. and welcome. You're next, my friend. Hi, y'all. Hope you are having a great day. Um, as, as you said, my name is Arnez. I also work with Jess um, here at Veterans United Home Loans. So uh, who's Veterans United Home Loans? We're an online mortgage company uh, specializing in the VA home loan. Um, over the years, we've become the number one VA lender um, in the country. Um, so we're very proud of that. It comes, obviously comes with a lot of hard work. Um, but over the years, we've become more than just a, a lending company. Um, we have a couple of different sister companies. We have Veterans United Realty. Um, so if a veteran is, you know, looking for a home um, in a certain area and they don't necessarily have a realtor, um, we have around 8,000 network agents all around the country that can kind of help them um, with that process. Um, we also have Veterans United Insurance, kind of the same thing, just different product. Um, if they're looking for uh, homeowner's insurance, uh, auto insurance, maybe just bundling that, um, we have that as well. Just kind of making it easier for, um, obviously, the borrower to um um, in that process, obviously buying a home can be stressful and then going to all these different places um, could also be stressful. So we try to make it kind of that one stop shop for the veteran. Um, and, and as Jess said, we also have um, Neighbors Bank. They're an affiliate company of uh, Veterans United Home Loans, kind of a different product. They're focusing more on that USDA loan. Um, but with that company, we have a lot more uh, remote opportunities, um, mainly in sales. Um, so if that's something that's interests you, um, feel free to reach out. I'll, I'll put my uh, information in the chat, but um, look forward to speaking with y'all. Yeah, that's I'd awesome. like to say I, I learned a lot about Veterans United when I was at the uh, Entrepreneurship Boot Camp for Veterans in uh, Missouri, and I had never um, really known what they are, who they were. But um, through that EBV, I was able to learn so much about what they do around the country for veterans. Um, they, they host events, they sponsor um, uh, you know, certifications um, like the EBV, and they, they're just amazing resource. So uh, definitely check them out. Um, you got my stamp of approval, if that means anything to anyone. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for all that. Uh, and next, it's it's either going to be Andrea or Andrea. Hello and welcome. You're next. Um, it's Andrea. Can you hear me okay? Awesome. Awesome. Well, my name is Andrea, and I am a veteran spouse. My spouse just retired in January, and now I have the pleasure of working for DeVita as a recruiter. And I am in the position now where I want to give it back to you guys. Um, I've attended, oh gosh, probably dozens of these things as a spouse before trying to get employment. And so now I'm just happy to give that back to you guys. Um, DeVita is a kidney care company. We are a Fortune 200 company. Um, so we're located all over the United States. We actually have some locations outside of the country as well. Um, I personally do recruiting in the state of Colorado. Um, but as you know, we're all over the place. So um, I just really love the culture of this company that we um, really care about you as a person and we have that work-life balance. Um, but I, we are looking for um, leadership roles. So we have our facility administrators that are the managers of the clinics, um, operations directors. Um, from a clinical support perspective, we are looking for administrative assistants. Those are um, non-medical, no experience necessary type positions, so great for spouses or whatnot. Um, we have licensed roles such as our, our nurses, our, our um, LPNs, um, we need social workers that are licensed, we need registered dietitians. Um, we also have non-clinical roles called patient care technicians, and we will provide you all of the training necessary if you want to get your foot into the medical field. Um, so I am going to drop into the chat um, a quick little blurb you can fill out if you are interested in hearing a little bit more about our positions. I promise you somebody will reach out to you this next week. Um, but hopefully we'll get to connect in one of these chat rooms, but I'd love to talk to you soon. Well, thank you so very much. We appreciate that. Sounds exciting. I heard remote roles. That's what I heard. So... I guess uh, there's some remote roles, you know, and honestly, there's even tech. I know there's a lot of, um, you know, people in the computer technology space too. So that's awesome. All right. Up next, Dean. Hello and welcome. Hello, how's it going? My name is Dean Drummond. I'm the uh, head of military veteran talent acquisition here at Adobe. So everything that's dealing with military vets comes through me. And uh, you know what? 
on behalf of Adobe, I just got to say, you know, we have opportunities that are out there and things are constantly changing out there in the cycle of America right now where things coming and going and everyone's hearing things about, uh, you know, job switching and, and, and personnel are having to leave particular companies. It's great to be in a company here with Adobe where none of that has happened yet. But uh, I'm not really here today on behalf of Adobe, which is kind of weird. You know, I mean, we can talk about Adobe all day long, but I, I really want to share with you because I'm only going to be able to go to one iteration uh, today with, for you all, Brian, through the cycle. But uh, you know what? If you're a transitioning service member and you're looking for opportunities that are out there, you need to look at all opportunities. Uh, you know, it's, it's great that you look at the big names, the Fortune 500 companies, but don't forget about the startup companies, the, uh, the, the small size, medium sized companies that are out there, because there's a lot of opportunities and you'd be surprised the amount of hands on experience that you can get with these other organizations and companies that are out there. Uh, for me to share with you being on all the sides that, I, that I've been on is that when you go to a big company and they need you to do X, Y and Z, that's all you're going to do is X, Y and Z. Uh, but when you go to a small, mid-sized company, they need you to do X, Y, and Z. That's going to be on your job description. But you're going to get experience on one, two, and three, and lowercase a, b, and c. And what I mean by that is that your aperture of hands-on experience is really just going to expand. And if your ultimate goal down the road is to go work for a large-sized company, that's great. You've built up your resume, but the amount of experience that you can get uh, from all of these other companies that we have in the US, you just cannot bypass them. So whether you're going to a virtual event, you're going to an on-site event, and do not pass the table, do not pass the time up, talk to them. You just don't know what the picture looks like if you're not gonna put yourself in the frame. Uh, that's all I have for right now. So uh, thanks again, Brian and crew for uh, having us out here today. Hyundai's uh, Robert's up next. <laughs> oh, yeah, he is. And I appreciated all that photography stuff you threw in there, Aperture. And yeah, that was good. All right, Robert, let's hear it, my friend. Hey, good afternoon. My name's Robert. I work for Hyundai Motor America. I'm Hyundai's military liaison. I cover the entire United States by myself, okay? What I do is I help veteran spouses and their dependents find employment at the dealership level and corporate level. Um, Hyundai has everything from mechanics to salt and parts, but we're also looking for everything from executive assistants to engineers to HR. It really depends on what you're looking for. Hyundai also has an aviation drone program that works out of Hyundai Hatchy, which is in, uh, was it Michigan? Okay. But they have jobs right now in California, in uh, Silicon Valley, in DC, that kind of thing. So, um, don't think that there isn't a job for you, you know, with Hyundai, you know, because you don't, you don't think you're a car person or whatever. Hyundai has a lot of different things. We have a whole IT side of the house where you work for Hyundai Auto Ever. They basically do everything from desktop support to breaking my computer by forcing patches down my throat, that kind of thing, to, you know, they, you know, to giving me new machines and that kind of stuff, right? But then we also have a cybersecurity wing that basically uh, does systems embedded in the vehicles, you know, so you kind of jump around doing different things. Um, I don't personally care who you work for. If you want a job, I'm about networking, okay? Um, I will send you a variety of emails. In one of those emails, there'll be job leads specifically for Hyundai and job leads specifically for or contacts to other companies. One of them's 49 pages of contacts to other companies. So you can get everything from Lockheed Martin, NASA, SpaceX, that kind of thing. General Dynamics are all on there. Um, and then I have another 14 page document that is law enforcement agencies. So if you're trying to connect with like Secret Service, FBI, the CIA, the Marshals, that kind of thing. I got those contacts there for you too. Please feel free to reach out. I'll throw my information again for you guys in the chat, you know, but I will send you a lot of different things. Whatever doesn't apply to you, delete it because all of you are going to get the same emails. And, you know, because I, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel, you know, so I send everybody the same thing. And then from there, I kind of just whittle it down to whatever you guys are interested in. Thank you for your time. Absolutely. And, uh, once Robert sends those emails, uh, one or two might go to your junk uh, email or spam. So make sure you double check that. But they're all gold. Uh, hey, real all quick, right. real yeah. quick, um, Robert, don't you guys have a drone program? Yes. I yep. swear, yeah. I was just going to mention that too. <laughs> Hyundai's, drone program, Hyundai's drone program is actually 
Well, Hyundai Hatchy is in Superior Township, Michigan. But the funny thing is, is that's where they do cars. Well, the drone program is under them, but when you look at their specific jobs, and I'll post it in the chat, um, their program, a lot of their jobs are actually in uh, Silicon Valley in California, uh, in Irvine, California, and they have jobs in D.C. area. So the Hyundai Hatchy website, it's one of those weird ones where you go to one side of the, the website and it talks about the web, the, the thing and all that kind of stuff. But then if you kind of, eventually you click enough, you'll find the air mobility division, which is the aviation side, you know, um, but I will throw the information. I'll put a PDF in the chat that page two of that PDF actually has um, all of the corporate website links. But from there, I kind of just pick the links for you guys. So you don't have to do too many clicks. I try to and, make it as easy as possible for you guys. And you also have a, um, um, like a flight aircraft, right? Well, that's the drone program. Okay, so what drone. It, it, it's a basically a version of Uber Air. So what it is wow. is later, um, what they're going to do is they're designing these aviation drones that are going to be flown by the uh, UA, you know, the UAV pilot and whatever. But it's going to be like a taxi service going from point A to point B and all that kind of stuff. So they're actually helicopters, you know, drones, that kind of thing. So like Cal Tesla and all these ones have these. Um, uh, you know, autonomous vehicles. This is an autonomous helicopter. That's a passenger vehicle. So flight mechanics. Uh, yeah, flight mechanics, mechanics, structural mechanics. Uh, they're looking for uh, everything from test engineers, all that kind of stuff. So you, when you go to the site, that's what I'm saying. And the thing is, it's just like if somebody was interested in Genesis, you're not going to find a lot of Genesis jobs on the Hyundai site because they're trying to break apart the two brands. Same thing with the drone program. They're trying to break apart the, the two brands, one's aviation, one's car. But then the thing is, Hyundai also bought Boston Dynamics. So before I could say Hyundai didn't have anything that shoots. Now they do. Now they have those little four-legged robots, you know, dogs. And then you see the, the M16s mounted on top of that. That's Boston Dynamics. Well, Hyundai owns them now. So That's we awesome. have everything. It is. Connect with Robert. Get the stuff. Talk to him in the chat rooms that are, or the breakout rooms that are about to happen. Uh, it's going to be amazing. All right. And last but not least, we have John. Nope, we got a couple more oh, after him. Okay. Well, then we got John. And as John's speaking, uh, I'm going to throw up a poll for the recruiters, uh, similar to the one that we did for the job seekers. But John, go ahead, take it away. I'll throw this poll up. We appreciate you being here. All righty. Hey, my name is John Tansel. Thanks for having me here, Brian. And um, I run the veteran programs at a company called Skillstorm. And uh, in one sentence, what we do is we recruit, we train, we employ and then deploy entry-level software developers and cyber professionals. Uh, we are a uh, vet tech preferred provider. Uh, we have a great working relationship with Amazon, specifically with AWS. We're one of their select technology partners. Right now, I'm recruiting for uh, two different cohorts. We're going to start uh, October 24th and another one on November 14th to learn AWS DevOps, which is AWS with some cyber in it. And um, the vet tech program was started in 2019 uh, by the VA to help more and more veterans get into the technology field. You don't need a ton of tech experience. You don't need a degree. You do have to um, qualify to get in, uh, you know, as far as uh, you have to have the, the G2 to be able to figure out what you're being taught. But if, if you can get past that, uh, Again, uh, October 24th, November 14th, that tech. It's all being taught uh, professionally by instructors. This is not self-paced. And the key is if you do graduate from the program, obviously that's the key, you do have to graduate, that AWS is guaranteeing you an interview with them uh, via us. So we have a great working relationship with them. We do have another program for those that uh, already know how to code and have a bachelor's degree. And we can talk about that in the chat room. And lastly, v 2 i will be one of the first ones to know when this actually gets the thumbs up from the Department of Labor. We're working on a one-year paid apprenticeship in cyber uh, for young NCOs. Wow. That's uh, awesome. We, we, we had a three-year paid apprenticeship, Brian, with the, the DOL helped us design. The problem was our clients, meaning the big Fortune 100 companies, they just could not wrap their heads around it. So we went back to them and said, hey, 
can you figure out one year instead of three years? And they said, yeah. So we said, all right, we're going to make a one year paid apprenticeship in cyber. We're going to do all the training up front for 16 weeks. We're just waiting on the thumbs. They've got all of the curriculum. We're just waiting on the thumbs up and the DOL to be able to launch it. Uh, hopefully that'll be sometime this winter. Nice. That is awesome. And, now, and Matt, I know AB was here, right? Yeah, so AB and then Nick Boozy. Okay. AB, hello and welcome. Hey, thanks, gang. Uh, happy Saturday. Um, I just wanted to hop in here and, and kind of like Dean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always here to support Brian and the crew here. But um, if you guys are looking for jobs, we, we have uh, quite a few jobs. We've posted um, uh, look, looking for a lot in the tech space. So uh, if you're looking for a remote, have some tech skills, uh, happy to talk to y'all. Thank you very much for that, A.B. We always appreciate you uh, showing up. And then you said Nick was next. Nick. Yes. Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Nick Bussey. Um, I've actually known Brian for quite a while. That's the industry from the very beginning has been just amazing. Um, so I'm glad that all these companies are on here. Uh, but uh, what I do is I run military engagement for a company called Leaf Home. Uh, that is our parent company. Um, on top of many different sister companies, you might know Leaf Filter, Leaf Home Safety Solutions. Uh, there's plenty, plenty of companies that we are the mother company of. <clears throat> um, but I run what's called Vet Connect. So Vet Connect is our overall military engagement department. Um, and it's not just a headquarters thing. It's in all of our offices across all of our companies across the nation. So what is Vet Connect really? Um, Vet Connect is our basically our channel to go ahead and recruit military talent and military spouses. Um, whether it is going to be post-military direct hire, it could be mill spouse hire. Um, and then also through that channel, we have the ability to bring you guys in through SkillBridge and hire our heroes, all that good stuff. So we're, we're, we're partnered with all of them. Um, it's a very simple process, just like any other. We, we love to talk to you guys, uh, interview you and get you through the process and help you transition. But um, yeah, it's, it, we're across many different fields. So one thing that we always look for are recruiters. So if you are a recruiter coming out of USREC, um, maybe you're, look, you're coming out of the Navy Recruiting Command or anything whatsoever, um, we can bring you on board. If you want to learn recruiting, we actually now train you guys at the very, very beginning if it is through our Hire Heroes or SkillBridge. Um, and then everything else from tech, IT, um, to marketing, human resources. Uh, we got uh, installation managers, basically operational managers. And then now we're actually looking for some executive level leadership. So if you guys are looking for something that is um, going to take a large leadership role within the headquarters, we're, well, I'm welcome. I'm welcome you guys to go ahead and send me your resume or connect me on LinkedIn. Um, I think that we have found some value. Um, we've always found value in veterans, but now we're really finding some value bringing in some executive level leadership in the military. So connect with me. I'll connect with you and we'll get this party started. That is amazing. And we are moments away from getting into our breakout rooms. Wait, wait, we're going to talk. Wait, wait. Oh, before you, before you get ready to say that, there's one more recruiter who has not spoken, and that's Brian. Because I was Brian. about to say we got stuff from <laughs> MHA. Uh, oh, yeah. I guess uh, I got to put on that hat, right? Um, so, uh, yes, everybody, um, I don't do best to industry full time. Um, so this is my, my uh, passion, my love. I get to do it at night and on the weekends, um, like the Cape Crusader, get to fight veteran injustice. And uh, during the day, I actually am the director of military programs and recruiting for a company called Military Hiring Accelerator. And Military Hiring Accelerator was built about four years ago uh, with a impassioned vision to ensure all service members transitioning out and military spouses were able to find and land great careers. Um, it's, it's in the blood of, of our CEO. Um, he, uh, he actually created Military Hiring Accelerator because his best friend uh, in the Army uh, who wanted to create a, a staffing company just to help service members and their, their families um, tragically uh, passed away during a uh, tough mutter of, of a heart attack. Um, so our CEO uh, decided this is what he was gonna do to honor him and created Military Hiring Accelerator. So uh, with Military Hiring Center, we have roles all over the country along with um, different types of roles. 
Uh, just give you an example, we're always looking for cybersecurity, uh, Intel uh, personnel. Uh, if you can go to uh, militaryaccelerator.com and go to our job board and, and all down below, if you do not see a role that fits you, it's okay. We have more roles than we can fit on our webpage, our job board. So fill out the form at the bottom of the job board and with the desire of what you want to do, uh, what role you want, and you will be guaranteed a first interview from one of our recruiters. Every single person that, that uh, fills out an application with us gets a phone call from one of our recruiters. Um, so we have uh, other roles like AV technician, facilities management, um, customer success manager, drivers, class A truck drivers, um, uh, network administrator, Windows server lead. Uh, we've got uh, talent acquisition role. We have business analysts, accounting. Yeah, bridge too, right? Um, yep, about to get to that. Um, <laughs> uh, we even have a GIS uh, specialist role. So anyone out there was in uh, Intel doing, uh, doing uh, uh, geospatial uh, intelligence, we've got a role for you as well. Project coordinators and project managers. So reach out, um, definitely go to the bottom of our website and check that out. In, in my role as a director of military programs and recruiting, I'm also over our sponsor, or excuse me, our SkillBridge program, uh, which uh, we bring on SkillBridge interns every single month. Uh, we're not like hire heroes where you, you got, you know, one cohort uh, a quarter. Uh, we can bring you on at, any time um, that you want. And we are looking for recruiters uh, and you don't have to have any experience recruiting. We will teach you everything. Uh, also, anyone who wants to get, to get into business to business sales and business development, um, you'll be reaching out to real companies on the outside to uh, find cl uh, clients for military hiring accelerators so we can hire for their company. Um, you're also, uh, if you have a desire to do back office operations, and operations is completely different in the military than it is outside in the civilian world. So you'll learn about payroll, and you'll learn about contracts, uh, and tons of other things that you, you probably have never touched uh, before. So if you're interested, um, go ahead and reach out to, to us about that. Um, the last thing is uh, I'm in charge of our a scout program. And so anyone who uh, is not qualified to do SkillBridge, uh, this includes uh, veterans, military spouses, even civilians who want to uh, make a little extra money by referring service members to the roles, uh, transition service members, veterans or military spouses to the roles that we have open, will get up to $1,000 per uh, hire from, uh, from our site. Uh, and so you could actually get 300 people in the year uh, and you can make $300,000 just by uh, referring people uh, to uh, to our website and, uh, and getting them hired. Brian, so, Brian yes. I just want you to know that I am referring everybody on this call uh, to you. <laughs> Cheater. So uh, everybody, if Can't any, me. If, anybody here who is uh, looking for a job, uh, tell them Alfredo sent you. <laughs> Tell Brian Alfredo sent you, um, uh, and we'll help each other. <laughs> there we go. So, uh, yeah, just reach out to me if you're interested in becoming a scout. Um, we've got a, a bunch of them. And also, we have an unpaid internship program. So if you don't fit into a skill bridge, um, and you're maybe a middle spouse that's looking for a second career, uh, but wants to change to, to become a recruiter or uh, business to business sales, you can go ahead and get on board with us as an unpaid intern. Uh, so you can actually get um, experience calling candidates and using ATS. Uh, and then you can stop whenever you're, you're ready to, but you can pad your resume with as much as you want um, prior to going and, and applying for other, other career, uh, other companies. So just want to give you that. Sorry, it was a lot, apologize, um, but I'm the boss, so I kind of can. Uh, so, uh, Go ahead, Matthew. Uh, yeah, so 
Uh, I was just going to say, uh, before we get into uh, the breakout rooms and uh, we get the famous phrase from Brian, uh, we encourage uh, cameras. It helps with the networking uh, in the rooms. Uh, if you're uh, if you're able to uh, go ahead and do that, uh, we'll have a couple more announcements. We'll get into uh, veteran service organizations and businesses uh, when we get back from the breakout room. But pending anything else, I think we might be ready, Brian. Yeah, let me just give you some um, some rules of engagement. So you all are going to be uh, randomized into uh, breakout rooms with eight to ten people. Um, the first thing that everyone has to do is identify if there's a vet, if there's a facilitator in there from Beth's industry. If we do not have a facilitator in there, then the person who's been to the most events becomes the automatic deputized facilitator. So congratulations uh, if that's you. And uh, your job is to make sure everybody starts to give their 30 to 45 second elevator pitch, uh, in, even if they already did it in the main session, because we have people coming and going throughout the event. Uh, so we wanna make sure everybody knows everybody. Uh, and then uh, it'll go to what was called crosstalk. And the facilitator's role is to make sure no one person takes up too much of the time, unless the whole group is asking them questions um, like a recruiter or a veteran service organization or a veteran advocate that's providing great knowledge. Um, so other than that, everyone should get about two minutes and 30 seconds uh, cumulative to talk uh, during the rooms. They go by very fast, uh, 25 minutes long, uh, but it's going to feel like you're only in there for about five minutes. So uh, um, any questions about that? All right, last thing, make sure everybody has put a designator in front of their name. This allows me when I'm doing the breakout rooms to make sure that there's enough uh, career seekers in a room with, with recruiters and veteran service organizations. Uh, it's randomized, but you know, randomly, sometimes they'll miss a recruiter and I'll have to move one into the room before you guys uh, get started. So if you haven't done so yet, go click on your video uh, go to the top uh, three dots on the on the right and go ahead and click rename. Then you're going to put uh, what Matthew is about to put in the chat uh, uh, as a designator. And if you have multiple designators, that's fine. Put those on there. Um, but um, give Matthew a second. So put those designators and we'll give everybody about 30 seconds to do that. And I'm um, going to make sure the breakout rooms are good to go. He's got it up there now in the chat room. So put your designators up there. One second. Alfredo, you got some words of wisdom? Uh, of course, I always got words of wisdom. Hey, make sure that you guys engage in your rooms. Don't just be passive. Don't just listen to everybody else. Networking is a two-way street. I got to talk to you. You got to talk to me. So when you get in these rooms, all right, don't don't uh, turn your camera off. Don't unmute your mic. I mean, don't mute your mic and just sit there. Engage. Ask questions. Okay. Learn from everybody. This is the only way we're going to start to get out there. We're going to start to get our brand, our name out to these recruiters who are here looking for you. OK, they're not here because they just want to hang out. Uh, they're here because they're looking for talent to hire. You are that talent. But you have to come out of your shell and you got to go and reach out to them and talk to them. So if Brian is ready. And almost. Matt, almost ready. And Matthew, you, you ready to uh, launch everything? As soon as uh, Brian gives the, the thumbs up. Yeah, we're, we're just about there. And I would also just like to say thank you again to everyone, every recruiter, every attendee, every, just everybody that's here. You make these events. We appreciate all the comments on LinkedIn. We appreciate the shares. These events are amazing because of all the attendees that show up and that's you. So we appreciate that so much. We look forward to responding to all your posts. When we get done posting all these breakout rooms and do all the behind the scenes stuff, we're gonna be engaging with you. So 
Make sure you take those pictures of the breakout rooms. Make sure you tag us and post the individuals, tag that's the industry, and we'll be there because this event is amazing and it's because of all the participants and that's you. So we're eternally grateful and just want to make sure that uh, we can continue doing these things. So we'll have more announcements and uh, more interaction after the breakout rooms, but I think we're ready, Brian. Yep, uh, we're good to go. Um, if for some reason um, you drop out and, and come back in, uh, you may or may not go back to the same room that you were in. Uh, sometimes the system lets you, sometimes it doesn't. So don't get mad at me. Uh, also, this is randomized. So don't get mad at me. <laughs> um, but I, I try to make sure that there's a recruiter in every room. Um, and if there happens to be a room that I missed, um, make sure that you are uh, the B2I facilitator or veteran service organization. Um, start, you know, providing some transition guidance and, and free and resources and things that you know, okay? With all that said, like my mom used to tell me and like your mom always told you, go to your rooms. Stop recording. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hope that was... Uh, Oh, we got more people coming. Awesome. There we go. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome back. Hope uh, that first breakout session was good. And for those of you who didn't realize that you're going to have to give your elevator pitch uh, in the first 30 seconds of, of getting on there, surprise. So uh, hope uh, uh, I know all of them were probably horrible. And that's OK. Because coming to these events, you're going to get your chance to do it multiple times so that the first time you give your elevator pitch isn't in front of a hiring manager. Ah, that's why we do this. So the more events you come to, the more practice you get with your elevator pitch. You can be Donald Duck in one room and Superman in another room. You know, keep changing changing the elevator pitch out, seeing what's what works for you. So hope... Uh, Hope that helped, and I hope you got some good information out of that first breakout room. We're going to be doing those all day. Um, so what we do now is we go through and do our first intermission. Uh, Robert, I, I got you. I just want to uh, say something. Uh, if you are a recruiter who just came on, I know I saw Marisol, um, uh, go ahead and raise your hand, your digital hand, um, by going down to the reactions and clicking raise hand so that everybody can uh, can hear what kind of open roles you have, why your company is better than all the rest, and everyone should go and, and work for your company. And then after you give your recruiting speech, you go ahead and uh, post your information in the main chat so that people know how to reach out to you and apply for your roles. So um, Robert, did you want to say something? Yes, only reason I want to is just in the future, I recommend, because this was the question, she actually left the event altogether. She just put, I'm a nurse, I had to leave, you know, and I'm returning now, but is that she want, She was thinking that there was individual rooms specifically towards different brands or different industries. So maybe before we break up in a room, say, hey, besides your, I'm randomizing, say, hey, you're going to be put in with people looking for IT, for finance, construction, whatever. Because I think she was under the assumption that she was going to be put in a room with maybe just nurses. Nurses. Where's my nurses at? I need a nurse. But, but you. But yeah, she's gone. I just tried to see if she's still active on the thing. But uh, her name is uh, was it uh, Kim White? You know. Mm -hmm. So look her up when you get the after email. You know. Awesome. Maybe she sent me a connection request. I'm trying to find her now on LinkedIn. Hey, but, this is what I'm talking about. Good looking out, team. Right. So that, and I just want to make sure, because yes, this isn't uh, industry specific. You're going to get dumped into rooms with all walks of life. Here's, yeah. well, go ahead. Uh, Delena, you were going to say something? Because I saw you start talking. Oh, no, I was just letting her know that I'm going to see if I can find her on LinkedIn real quick. Um, okay. Because she was asking me, and she had directed a question to me in the chat about the nursing thing, and I told her I didn't have anything. Um, th okay. Right. That, well, yeah, one thing. Real quick, Brian, one thing I want to tell all, all of you who are out here looking for opportunities, just because you get into a room that doesn't have somebody who's looking for the nurse or looking for the cybersecurity or the HR, there are recruiters there. 
A, they can give you tips, okay, so that you can go and, and, and learn how to ask a question or how to do your, your elevator pitch. B, you don't know who they know. Exactly. Okay? You don't know who they know. I might be an IT guy, but I know Ed, right? So now you come to me saying, hey, I, I, you know, I'm sorry. I thought uh, I'm a nurse. I'm not. A... Hey, that's a problem. Let me go connect you to Andrea. Oh, you got a top secret clearance and you're, and, and, and you're a, a cyber person? Hey, Marisol's right over here. She can help you. Okay, you want HR? Now let's talk. Okay, I know other people. And Marisol sent people to me. And Andrea sent people to me. And Elena sent people to me. And we're going to take care of each other. So don't go into a room where you find recruiters who are not in your uh, field. Talk to them. And God forbid, they might turn you on to something you never thought about. And also take down the names of the recruiters you meet in here because um, we all have friends. We all have other transitioning service members, family members, military spouses that might be looking for employment. Hey, hook them up, connect them with the people that you mm -hmm. meet. Ooh, wow, mind blown, all right? Mm -hmm. um, so really this is, this is a community. That's what Best Industry is. It's a community, it's a family. So if I can't help you out, I am going to find the person that can help you out. I don't have to do that. This is not my, right. like, my paid job, but because I want to and I want to pay it back um, and because of how upset I am of why they, not, they don't tell us about the free stuff and the resources and services and even the names of companies. God, if they could just tell us uh, about different companies that are out there while we're still serving. Sure. Look at, look at Robert. Look at Robert. Works for Hyundai. Yeah. Right? He's a recruiter for Hyundai. What does he do? He gives you, if, if he sends you his package, there's Read all it. kinds of jobs for all kinds of industries. Yeah. Now, if, yeah. I, if I, yeah, if I knew Robert was just, uh, if I'm thinking, oh, wow, he's just a recruiter for Hyundai. I don't want to, I, I don't want to work on cars. I'm shutting myself out of opportunities from a guy who's offering stuff who wants to help. Exactly. And, and one of those people, I think, is Catherine from Oracle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, right, good, uh, that's a nice segue. segue. Nice segue. I guess that's Hello, my Catherine. turn. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Hi, guys. Um, my name is Catherine from Oracle. I'm a sourcing recruiter. First off, thank you so much for uh, allowing me to be here and speak. And thank you so much to the Vets2 industry team. I've been to a few of these events and every time it just gets better and better. A um, little about me, why Oracle is so awesome. I'm going to go over what Brian does. We have a team of recruiters and sourcers who um, strictly support the veteran community. We want the veterans. We want the spouses. So it's not just you guys. We want your spouses too. So um, share resumes. Look on the Oracle career site. We have cleared roles. We have regular roles. And I don't know if anybody knows. Oracle just acquired Cerner. So that means we have healthcare, federal healthcare roles that we're hiring for as well. So check out the career site and see what's out there. A lot of these are early in careers where you just may need a four-year degree. So there are entry-level roles that we want to source and put you guys into to help you out as well. So again, reach out to Oracle. We're amazing, just like everybody else is, but hang out with us too. Thank you guys. That's awesome. Thank you, Catherine. Glad you could attend another event. Uh, we always appreciate you uh, coming in and letting us know about all the great things. Uh, Nathaniel, hello and welcome. You're next. Hi, everyone. My name is Nathaniel Young. Uh, I'm actually a transition and service member that's doing SkillBridge through Pediatric Associates. I just received my full job offer as a uh, full-time clinician recruiter. But on the side, I try to do my best to help out other veterans get their foot in the door. Um, Pediatric Associates is the largest private venture pediatrician uh, organization in the United States at the moment. We have, organized, we have locations through California, Texas, Florida, Oregon, New Jersey, New York, uh, and Pennsylvania, with uh, hopefully acquiring by the end of the year locations in Washington as well. 
Um, just because we're a pediatrician organization doesn't mean that we don't have HR roles available. We have remote roles available. Yeah, we tend to side with like, hey, if you're a corpsman or a medic, like we'd like to grab you up. But we do have those uh, talent acquisition spots too, for especially remote that are great for spouses. And, uh, yeah, that's one thing I would like to echo to everybody is like, don't let yourself get pigeonholed into a, a particular position or industry. Every industry on the planet is going to have HR. Every industry is going to have business development specialists and um, research and development. So you just got to keep your options open. Hey, uh, Nathaniel, uh, two quick things. One, you, uh, we got to connect you with Kim White. <laughs> um, she should have heard that. Um, so if, if my other recruiter friends can hook Nathaniel up with Kim White when they find her, um, and Andre is like, no, I'm keeping her. So, uh, and, uh, and also Robert Corchi just uh, put a comment in um, the main chat that there's a, vir a virtual veteran summit in healthcare. So um, oh, I need to know that too. Yeah, it's October 21st. So six days from now. Uh, I do okay. have the best names, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> So and like Daniel's it, killing it on LinkedIn, by the way. Him and I are running the same circles. I love it. <laughs> awesome. All right, All right. I think we got Ryan next. What's going, everybody? Oh. It's a lovely Saturday here. I'm in the Dallas area. I'm actually uh, still in the Marine Corps Reserves. Just hit my 20-year mark, and I've transitioned about four times. So I know how <laughs> tough it can be uh, coming on and off orders. Um, currently, right now, you know, I got – Two plugs. One would be for candidates. Uh, so I'm a recruiter with Corn Ferry. We're actually having a virtual hiring event in a week. So uh, I have an array of job opportunities nationwide, not just here to local to Dallas. Um, so connect with me. I'll shoot my LinkedIn message and, uh, and give you my spreadsheet to see to show you what I got. And then um, also looking for always looking for new clients. So if you have business needs, because I work for a firm, um, if I 100% and only source veteran for candidates. So if you are looking to for more can, uh, veteran candidates for your company, let me know. We can be part of your team, and uh, I can shoot more candidates your way. That is awesome. What, Thank you very what much is, for that. What, what's your company, and what do you and what do you guys do? So I work for Corn Ferry. Uh, what, they're they're an executive recruiting firm, and 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 so yeah, I mean we 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 mostly have middle management jobs. Um, technician roles, you know, lots of things for transitioning veterans, especially on the enlisted side or company grade officers. Um, me specifically, I don't have any IT, but m other members of my team does. Um, but yeah, that's what we All do. Right. Cool. I, oh. just, I, I just wanted a clarification on that. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yep. So basically, everyone should reach out to you. <laughs> that's you right. Roles. Except that's for right. medical people who need to reach out to Andrew. Well, medical people can reach out to me because I don't have any medical roles, but I, I also, I sometimes I get, you know, contacted by corpsmen and stuff, and I don't know what to do with them. So connect with me, and then I'll toss them your way. There you go. There you go. Well, that is amazing. Mark Blake, you're next, my friend. Hello and welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. Long time no see for a lot of you. Hello, hello, hello. Um, Mark Blake, I am retired, Navy retired about 12 years ago. Uh, as you can see, I'm part of the staff here at V2I and I work for a company called Rubicon Global and I'm not a recruiter. I work in the finance department, finance and accounting, but it's a great company to work for. I can't tell you about all the benefits and stuff that they give you, but they are great benefits. Uh, we currently have 19 openings. Most of them are in accounting and finance. We do have some, uh, and what we call what they call development. I'm going to put the. You muted yourself. I'm going to put the company website here in the chat. And all of the jobs that they have open are also listed on LinkedIn under under the company name Rubicon Global. Um, like I said, uh, finance, accounting. There is a position for an HR specialist. And then they also have data specialists. For all, so for all you data uh, uh, analysts wannabes out there, uh, give us a look. And if you apply for anything, let me know so I can let the HR people know. Um, and I will say this, every single position, 
for this company is remote. There is there are no in-person positions. And I will tell you tell you all this about remote. Everybody wants a remote position. They're great. Once you get one, you will never, ever, ever want to go back in the office again. Facts. All right. But here's my one question. Yes. Do they apply first and then contact you or contact you first and then apply? Yes. Either way. Yeah, contact okay. me first. Contact me All first. Right. That way I can let them know that it's coming. Fabulous. And I see hope is next, but I have when, someone in the chat though that that I don't want to forget about. And that's Beth Charles, if I said her last name right. Beth, hello and welcome. You're next. Thank you. Uh, we are also, all our roles are remote. Um, and frankly, I take people from all different sorts of skill sets. Our company is American Income. We work exclusively with unions, teachers, nurses, veterans, uh, police, firefighters, and we work with them on their benefits. Fully remote, flexible schedule, excellent income, great bonuses, uh, benefits. We, we take good care of our people. We even have company paid trips all over the world. A group of them just got back from Iceland. So if you like to travel, we can do that too. Um, and, he, and, and, and what Mark said is right. Once you go remote, you never want to go back, but it's hard work. You've got to have some self-discipline, but I, we are passionate about helping vets transition. So we have a role for you um, and our training is spectacular. So if you've never worked remote or it's a new industry to you, that's great. We can, we can teach those skills. What you need to have is, is a bend toward customer service, eager to learn, coachable is extremely important, um, and ambitious. You can grow really fast. We only promote from within. And uh, our COO of our company right now started out as an entry-level advisor. So we, we work hard to move you up in the world. So I will, I've posted my LinkedIn profile. I'll post it again. If you'd like to chat some more about it, please reach out and I'd be happy to help in any way. That is awesome. Thank wow. you so very much for that, Beth. Uh, so we're gonna get to Hope and then after that is gonna be Jesse Martinez. If I don't see any more hands or anything else in the chat uh, after that. So Hope, hello and welcome again. Hello, I want to represent a few things. One, Alfredo's Coffee House. It is Transition Conversation. It is every Sunday at noon at um, online, of course, uh, Eastern Standard Time. Um, I wanna talk to you about Paul Cummings. He has an organization called the Whole Cyber Hum Human Initiative. So if you're in cyber, you should be with Paul. Um, if you're looking for trainings to get certifications, you should be um, reaching out to Act Now education. And I will say that I finally posted my federal training webinars. <laughs> um, so basically they're cohorts and they're all going to be according to location and time zone. So then wherever you are, if you're in Germany, if you're in Hawaii, now you have the opportunity to go through my, my classes. That is all, there are all the links to everything I just discussed. Fabulous. All right. So I think we got Jesse, then I see Sean, and then we'll get into the veteran service organizations uh, as well. So go ahead, Jesse. Jesse Martinez. Absolutely. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, there we go. All right. Give me one. Can you hear me now? Absolutely. Okay, there we go. I couldn't hear you. All right. <clears throat> so my name is Jesse Martinez. I'm a U.S. Army vet, and uh, I was sharing my experience with uh, the group, uh, the breakout room that I was just in, and Brian asked me to go ahead and share that with you guys. So um, I had a really tough transition, um, and I had done everything, you know, from finance to whatever, and I had a hard time translating my skills and, and really finding my value proposition and, and learning what I needed to do to survive in the civilian marketplace. And what I found was these groups, specifically V2I, Alfredo's Coffee House, Hope White, all, everybody here. Um, and what that allowed me to do is 
really learned that I needed to have valued connections, real good connections with people, not just online Twitter connections or, you know, you know, we connected on LinkedIn, but like people that I could actually talk to, uh, get mentored, provide mentorship with and really grow. And because of that, you know, over my, you know, abundance of experience, um, I was able to have an experience, you know, just a few months ago where, I mean, you can go on my LinkedIn is still there. I don't take it off just because of my role, but I was desperate. Um, I had run out of money. I'd run out of opportunities. And um, so I, I went online and I just, you know, in the most professional way. And I said, Hey, this is where I'm at in my life. And, you know, I really need a job. And it was, the, you know, everybody that I connected with here, the V2I network, and, you know, I say Hope White, you know, Alfredo, and everybody else. And what ended up happening, those valued connections that I've built, that I've been a part of, boosted me up in, in the, um, the LinkedIn, whatever algorithm. And I had like 49,000 impressions in less than an hour. You know, and what ended up happening was I had a lady reach out to me and she was like, you know, I'm going to give this vet a job, maybe a temp job. It's going to be something. And a 15 minute conversation turned into two hours, two hours turned into four, four hours turned into six. And then, you know, another day of exactly the same thing. And all the things that I've been working on and I was able to uh, show my value and show what I would do and all the experience that I had. Um, allowed me to land the job I have today, which is executive vice president of a uh, PR and communications company with huge clients. And so I want to stress the, you know, the value proposition and those connections. Don't just connect to connect, really connect and make friends, you know, you know, have those relationships, be vulnerable, be okay to, to reach out and become mentored and mentor those that are around you, which is why I'm still here. Uh, because I'm, you know, you're never perfect. You're never done growing. You're never done transitioning. And so anyways, that was my story. I just wanted to share it. Uh, thank you guys for allowing me to be here still. That's Appreciate awesome, that, Jesse. Jesse. That really thank is you. awesome. That is. Um, oh. Yeah. And then uh, I'm just going to ask Mark, you still have your hand up. Uh, is there anything else that you need? No, I'm sorry. I forgot nope. to put it down. No, no. Got to run. Nope. I'll see you guys next sure. time. I got to run. I just got an important call. I got to. Yep. Take care. Yep. And uh, Sean, good to see you. Hey, buddy. Thanks, hey, Sean, can I interrupt you for a second? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, sure. yeah go um, I, I just want to make a comment about uh, Best Industry, kind of a plug, because in case people are leaving, um, we have two job boards, if you don't know about this, on our careers page. So one is from Fusion Cell, which we just partnered with. Uh, you'll be seeing a press release about that on Monday. Um, and make sure if you're following anybody in here um, that you really want to hear from all the time, click the bell on their profile so you get notified every time they post. If you don't do that, you're missing posts, okay? Um, make sure you're following the hashtags of Vets to Industry uh, and B2I underscore jobs. Uh, we put out tons of roles all the time um, from recruiters all over the place, and we don't want you to miss it. We have a group, um, that's the Best Industry uh, Job Board. Make sure you're joining that group as well, uh, along with our Best Industry group. So uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is uh, when you go to the careers page and the job boards, um, take your time looking through all the roles. Um, and, uh, and then, of course, spread the word to other people. Um, if you're a company or, or a recruiter here that represents a company, Best Industry, you know, relies on donations and sponsorships in order for us to keep building the resource library and keep hosting these events because they do cost some money. Um, I don't get paid at all. The board wants me to get paid at some point, but um, we just don't have the coffers for that yet um, for me to do this full time. Uh, but we will blow up when I can do this full time. Uh, but um, if your company is willing to sponsor an event, um, you please reach out to me or to Matthew and uh, we'll get you set up. Um, there's a lot of ROI in it. Um, so that's what I had about by that. We have an apparel shop. So if you want any of the swag that we that we wear, um, we got new hats. Uh, Matthew got a, 
got us a new hat made. It says V2I on it. So you got some choices. And uh, yeah, um, with that, I think I've got everything covered. So Sean, thank you for giving me that little time. Hey, no problem. You know, it's kind of like I had no choice, you know, but <laughs> 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 hey, so uh, real quick, I, I, I'm, I want to talk about a job and then uh, I hope I can talk about a um, uh, some training, but uh, I'm, I'm an advisor with, with uh, Syracuse University. I advise the online students in the Onwards Opportunity Program. We are hiring. Uh, I, I put a link for the jobs that we are hiring for uh, with Syracuse University, but the specific job I want to talk about is the program coordinator in El Paso, Texas. Now, if uh, those of you who are from Texas, um, you know, and oh. El Paso is a destination for you, great. Um, I don't know anything about El Paso, but I do know that Syracuse University is hiring for a program coordinator in El Paso to help with the Onward to Opportunity program in, the, in, in, in El Paso and in Texas in general. So I am going to uh, post the specific job uh, on, in the chat so that you can take a look at it and see if that might be something that you're interested in. Now, I just want to really quick talk about Syracuse University's uh, 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 Onward to Opportunity program. As, as I said, I advise for that program for the online students, but we have an online option and an in-person or installation team option. Uh, if you're in any of the installations in you know, Jacksonville, uh, Texas, uh, San Diego, Camp Pendleton, um, um, North Carolina, they're on, they're on a map that we have and I'll, put that, I'll drop that in the chat as well. We offer uh, training uh, for, uh, or a skill bridge program, and we offer training uh, within the last 180 days uh, that, you're, that you're on active duty. We help uh, transitioning service members, veterans of any era, and military spouses. These, the training that we offer is free, free 99, can't beat it, right? We don't ask for any GI Bill money. We don't ask for any uh, post 9-11 VA money, uh, none of that stuff. It's all free. All we ask for is your time. Within 90 days, you get to train uh, at a self-paced on HR, uh, pro project management, uh, all kinds of IT certifications, customer service, you name it. Uh, there, it, there's a there's a bunch of different training there. We have a we have a learning path for aviation maintenance as well. So if that's of interest to you, if you're interested in in, uh, in any of those fields, take a look at our our uh, learning paths and sign up. And uh, oh, thank you, Hope, for putting it in there. <laughs> you beat me to it. Uh, take a look there. And if you want to connect with me and, and uh, talk to me more about it, uh, I'll, I'll drop my LinkedIn profile and we can have a chat about it as well. Thanks. Thank you so very awesome. much, Sean. We hey, appreciate real you. Oh, Real yeah, quick, go I got one more. I got one more. So uh, before everybody you know, thinks that this event's over, um, we have a giveaway for everybody. Um, so it's uh, it was donated by one of our volunteers. It's a five hundred dollar package that um, somebody here is going to get. Uh, hopefully, we really wanted to go to a career seeker uh, that's a transitioning or a mill spouse. But what you get in this package is a 90 minute masterclass uh, with me uh, talking about uh, networking, about LinkedIn, about free resources, uh, and any other, answer any other questions you have about transitioning. So you get a 90 minute with me um, set up group masterclass. Um, you'll also get a 60 minute one-on-one -on -one session with me where I will go over your LinkedIn, I will go over your resume, I'll talk to you about your, your specific needs and desires and wants and what resources that could affect you um, and then answer any of your questions. Uh, then you will also get a 60 second elevator pitch video that will be put on our YouTube channel, our Vets Industry YouTube channel. So if you're not subscribing to that, you know, you gotta get over there and do that. Uh, and then also we will be posting that out on social media uh, on all of our platforms. Uh, that'll get your name out there. All uh, right. We have over 80,000 followers. So um, possibilities are you might get some, uh, um, some recruiters reaching out to you. And then finally, you're going to be getting a Vesta Industry coin, a Vesta Industry t-shirt or hoodie, your choice, and a Vesta Industry hat. So hopefully, uh, you know, you guys are okay with that, that package. It was, it was donated by a volunteer. Um, it's $500, we're $500. So um, if you want that package and you're not uh, uh, one of the winners or, or the winner, um, you can still um, you know, do a donation of 500 to get that package. But we have some other packages that are, that are 
less expensive as well. It doesn't have all the extra stuff on it. So thank you. Leslie, floor is yours. Happy B2I Saturday. Um, so Brian, we, <laughs> we did forget to mention something and that is November 5th is the Mill Spouse Mixer. Yes, so all the recruiters still online, please join us on November 5th. We only happen once a quarter and actually had to postpone last quarter. So we've been waiting. We've been waiting since like May for this. So really excited. Please spread the word. Now, it's not just for military spouses. It's also for veterans. So just know these same phenomenal recruiters will be back. But typically, there are even more remote roles at these opportunities. So if you're really somebody that is interested in remote opportunities, then our events tend to attract even more remote um, opportunities. So yes, save the date, November 5th. Okay, I'm gonna switch hats. My name is Leslie Coffey and I'm the VP of Military Engagement for ACP. What ACP does is we are a free nationwide nonprofit and we focus on one-to-one -one customized mentorship. That is one mentor for one veteran or spouse for the journey of a year. We request at least one hour a month. Uh, however, there's over 4,200 active in our program right now. So everybody's journey is completely unique. Everybody's cadence is unique because everybody's working on something customized to their specific journey. And we are gonna pair you with somebody that is a career professional in the space you're looking to get into. So um, again, you might meet one hour a month, you might meet every week. It's totally dependent on what works best for you. You name the space, we have somebody in there, uh, as well as entrepreneurs. So even if you're looking to launch your business, we uh, actually, Michael from um, oh my, Aerial Resupply just signed up. He's gonna help launching, yes, helping launching your business. So again, um, acp-usa.org. I'll grab the, the tab for you there. Who will we serve? We are a nationwide nonprofit, grant funded, so it is um, active duty spouses, gold star spouses, spouses of disabled post 11 as well as active duty service members, all branches of service, reserve, national guard, anybody served at least 180 days post 11 And if I could, one last thing. I hear this so often, so I think it's worth repeating. Sometimes people in their transitioning, it's so overwhelming. I understand it's like a fire hose, so much information. You do not have to select one VSO or another VSO. Trust me, we are all partners here. We're doing this, nothing more than see you succeed. So just like Sean was saying, go to O2O, guess what? You're going to get a mentor to help you with that journey and help you to, uh, to get that certification with O2O. Maybe you use that uh, Hiring Our Heroes Corporate Fellowship. You're going to have a mentor to help you with that 12 week in, uh, internship, right? Regardless of your journey, know that you don't have to select one or the other. We're all in this together. We collaborate because we want to see you succeed. So, thanks. So Lovely. Much. Um, yes. You, you, you forget, uh, maybe I didn't hear it. Uh, I know you guys are busy. You guys got tons of people coming in. How, how do I get to the, the, the head of the line? Oh, <laughs> yes. So make sure when you are applying, again, I'll drop the uh, link here momentarily, acp-usa.org. When you are applying, uh, make sure you put your referral sources B2I, Vets to Industry, because we have a, a partnership with Vets to Industry. And then if you have uh, some experience and you'd love to give back, and uh, we would absolutely love to have you. I'll also drop the mentor recruitment application in as well. We have, um, you know, there's there's a need out there, I will tell you, that with some economic headwinds, there tends, I think the need is not going down anytime soon. So if you have some experience, you'd love to give back and you have an hour a month, we'd love to chat with you. Thanks, Alfredo. Oh, and we also have hired 15,003 veterans in the last, Three months. Wow. <laughs> wow. And I miss you, Leslie. I, so I feel like we don't talk anymore. And and tell Eric we said hi since you stole I'm him. I'm this little uh, thing called like transition myself. So I know I've been, <laughs> but my heart is still here. Yeah, we think of Eric now as a pen pal. Never see him. Yeah, yeah we got to redo that. Where, hashtag, where is Eric? Yeah.
that needs to be revived. But uh, all right, next. I don't think we've heard from Anthony yet. Anthony, hello and welcome. Hey, how's it going, team? So I will tell you right off the bat, I am not a recruiter. Uh, however, I think there's a lot of great organizations out there, and you'll you've heard about a few, and you'll continue to hear about some. But I wanted to take an opportunity to kind of talk about a company that uh, hired me on. It's a small woman-owned business out of D.C. Uh, when I say small business, a lot of times we look at our recruiting or we look at our opportunities uh, to work into these big organizations, the Amazons and those types of organizations. And they're great. They give you tons of opportunity for upward mobility. But I would offer a thought to not forget the small businesses. The SOAR Management Consulting, uh, if you're one of those people that have a lot of experience throughout your military career, you've advised a lot of people, you know how to run in different organizations and help kind of problem solve challenges that some of the government agencies may have. Uh, and believe it or not, they have challenges. If you ever worked for the government, you probably know that. Uh, so what they do is they hire uh, senior consultants, uh, other marketing jobs, but there's also administrative jobs across the spectrum for uh, inside the uh, greater Northern Virginia area. Uh, they do require a TS clearance. Most of them, actually every single position will require some kind of poly, but you do not have to have it on day one. You can get that over the time of uh, employment. So it's a great organization. If you have any interest uh, in that organization, uh, in this organization that works with a lot of other three letter agencies up in the DC area, and you're planning on living in Northern Virginia, reach out to me. But if you're an Intel person and you're getting out and you're like, hey, I'm, I just need to figure out how to land, reach out to me anyways on LinkedIn. I'll send my, I'll put that in the post. Hey, we're all here for networking. I'm here to help. I'm finishing up my transition, but I want to make sure yours is as successful as possible. So, hey, best of luck. And uh, if I can help, I will. Thanks. That is awesome. Thank you so very much. Uh, John and Marisol, have, is there anything new? Yes. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, go right ahead. John from uh, Skillstorm. Uh, one thing I, I didn't mention regarding our vet tech program, uh, we're a preferred provider. There's only three in the United States. Uh, but the other is that you can do the vet tech program for AWS DevOps or for Java as a skill bridge program. Both require 180 days or earlier for uh, your ETS. So you would just have to do both of the programs simultaneously. You'd have to uh, apply to uh, SkillBridge and apply to VetTech at the same time. We've had people do it. It's very simple. Uh, basically, the big part about SkillBridge is getting your command approval um, because you know it is 16 weeks where you're going to be doing it nine hours a day. Um, but the other thing is too is that this is just I've been doing this for nine years now, and this is just a comment regarding remote work. Uh, yes. Their remote work is great. Uh, if you're a young NCO uh, or a young officer that's going into a brand new industry, coming right out of the military, remote work sounds cool. Hey, I could work in my PT gear at my kitchen table. Bad idea. Really bad idea. Uh, doing what I do, you know, I'm training people and I send them to Fortune 100 companies, to companies like EY or PwC or the Vanguard Group or Bank of America, and <clears throat> the, if you're if you're in person at at Ernst and Young, and you're just you just learn how to do software development, and you're now surrounded by 15 brilliant software developers from Ernst and Young, where the hell do you think you're going to learn more, at your kitchen table or being surrounded by 15 people who've been doing this for 10 years? So yes, remote work sounds cool, and I understand it because of certain family situations that people have to do it, especially mill spouses. But if you're young NCOs and you, you know everything you own is in seven C bags and you're relocatable, the, you want to be on site with all these brilliant people. They're going to help you. And the other thing too is, as you're working at a company, uh, you want to just like we're talking about networking here to find a job. Once you get that job, you want to work within that organization. You want to continue networking within that organization, so everybody knows who you are and what you do and how you bring value to that company. That's it. Yeah, John, uh, one thing real quick, Matthew, uh, and to piggyback off John, um, it's not only about the networking and it's not only about uh, the opportunities of being in person. 
when you do remote work, if you are in a certain headspace, you need to be out and talking to people and, and, and engaging with people. Okay. People know my story. I'm, I'm, I suffer from PTSD. I suffer from depression. And sometimes working remote, I get in my own head. I need to talk to people. I need to be outside of the house because to stay in the house is going to equal death to me at some point. So it's not just about networking. And, and it, 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 it's also about your mental health. If you need to be out there, you need to be around some pos uh, positivity. You need to, 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 to feel the sun on you and feel the breeze. Get out there. Don't look for a remote job um, because that's, that's going to hurt you in the long run. So thank you for bringing that up, John. Alfredo, uh, can, I, can I jump in on and piggyback on that? Go ahead. So, you know, a lot of folks, you know, there are a lot of hybrid roles out there. And the beautiful thing about hybrid roles is a lot of times it's within the hiring manager's control to set that schedule. So you can get the best of both worlds. Uh, for example, I'm a hybrid employee. I go into the office once a month. Some folks, you might get to go into the office two or three days a week. For a lot of our cyber guys, like what John was talking about, you absolutely need to be in the office two, three, four days a week if you want to be in a lot of these cyber positions. And we have a lot of transitioning cyber members who want to cross into net uh, cybersecurity, security engineer, and things like that, but they keep going to all these things and asking for a remote, but you got to work behind a firewall. You got to be in a skiff. You got to work with these guys and learn these roles. So hybrid roles are a great way to kind of, you go into the office a little bit, but you also get the time, you know, if you got kids and stuff, I got three little kids, six, two, and one. So, you know, it, the hybrid role is a great thing. Don't scoff at it, you know, welcome it. <clears throat> awesome. Fabulous. And Marisol, hello and welcome. You're next. <laughs> hey, guys, I have to head out soon. So I just wanted to drop some uh, nuggets. I wanted to um, add to what Mr. Sean Lewis talked about the O2O program. I went through the program, I got my PMP, and it did open up more doors for me. So, like a week after I got my PMP, I had a bunch of um, recruiters hitting me up for, with job offers. So, it is, it is a good certification to get. If that's really what you want to do, a lot of people think they just want to get it, it's going to give them more money, but you have to actually enjoy it. Like I enjoy doing Intel planning. I enjoy doing project management. So that's why I got the certification. I also got my security plus because I have that Intel background and then my Lean Six Sigma black belt and all of these certifications were paid by somebody else. So you don't have to tap into your GI bill. There's a lot of veteran programs out there. So my security plus I got through um, vets in tech. Um, they're always uh, providing uh, free courses and scholarships for for certifications. So look those up. Um, and I wanted to give you guys some resume writing tips. Know the difference between a federal resume and a corporate resume. I keep getting people's uh, federal resumes. I don't do federal resumes. It has to be like one, two, three pages. And then for your federal resumes, they have to be longer than you know three pages. So just know the difference. Do your research. And make sure you tailor your resumes to the job description. For those of you that are getting out, I know it's hard trying to figure out what you want to do next. But if you have an idea of what you want to do next, what roles you want to do, I encourage you to look up at least five job descriptions. Look at the verbiage, look at the words that they use and mimic that language and put it on your resume because you guys keep using military jargon. So a lot of recruiters will not have the military background like me. A lot of them are just civilians and that's it. And like, I was former Intel, so I understand what other Intel analysts did. So when I read resumes that are kind of like generic, I know they did more, so I'll still call the candidates, but most people will pass on those types of resumes. So be mindful of the language that you use. Like a lot of people that worked in Intel will say J2, N2. A civilian won't know that. So just say worked in, in intelligence directorate. So spell it out for them. You guys are always using acronyms on your resumes. Spell out your ac acronyms and what they mean. Um, I know we're all proud of our medals, but the medals don't bring anything to your, your resume unless it relates to the job that you're doing. So be mindful of that. And that's all I got from now for now. And I have to head out. So thanks for oh, having uh, me. I'm sorry. Excuse me, Marisol. Um, were you going to yes, share something else with the class? This is Hope. Hi, Hope.
Um, yeah, so I'm starting my side hustle here. So I'm launching my own secret squirrel consulting business. Um, oh, awesome. Oh, resumes, and um, basically what I've been doing for the past year, but it'll be like official. Um, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> So awesome. everyone sees that if you're a veteran owned or spouse owned business, you're going to have a chance to talk in front of everybody as well uh, at the next intermission. So this, that's great. I'm glad you were able to bring that out. So how, how would people get a hold of you to uh, get consulting? I'll put it on my LinkedIn profile and I'll uh, release my Calendly um, schedule so you guys can start booking with me. That's awesome. I'll, I'll do resume reviews, resume rewrites, because I've had a lot of candidates come to me or veterans come to me and also most spouses. They've had someone write the resume, paid a ton of money, and it was crap. <laughs> so I've had to do um, some rewrites for people and help them get uh, interviews. So I don't write pretty resumes. I write effective resumes. I use a boring. Ooh, I like that. Uh, Word document. I don't do Canva resumes. I don't do foo foo stuff. I get straight to the point because that's what recruiters want. And I have the inside scoop being that I'm a recruiter and, and a veteran. So I've been through the transition and I know what recruiters and hiring managers are looking for. So that's the advantage I have over other resume writers and all these wannabe uh, career coach clowns on LinkedIn that are whoa, selling. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why are you calling me a clown? <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about the ones that aren't legit. If the Paisley fits, if the Paisley fits, hey, 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 all right, Brian's over here talking. I think we need to go to the next breakout room, though. That's what we need to do. Yeah, I just said, yeah, so I'm ready to go. I just want to tell everybody I posted a couple things in the chat. Um, I forgot to mention how to win the $500 donation, uh, or the $500 package. So uh, you must be following Vets to Industry on either LinkedIn or Facebook, whichever platform you have. Hopefully all of you have a LinkedIn. If you don't, you need to get a hold of a V2I member ASAP because you need that, all right? Um, you're gonna also make sure you're following V2I underscore jobs. Um, again, you're gonna get a lot of information, a lot of job opportunities by following that hashtag and seeing it in your feed. Um, you're also gonna have to uh, subscribe to the Vets to Industry YouTube channel. Um, so yes, we were going to check. So uh, if you do all that, then all you have to do if you want to get the $500 uh, package, uh, then you're going to send an email to support at vets2industry.org and just title it $500 giveaway. Okay. Um, that way we know it's your, you're looking for that opportunity. All right. Um, so with that being said, Matthew Alfredo, am I missing anything? Oh, take photos all right if this is going to be your last breakout room take a photo so that you can put it on to your linkedin or facebook and talk about what you enjoyed or what you did during the event and tag every single person that was in that photo with you as well as tag bets to industry because that will bring all of us all of us v2i volunteers to your post to show it love and um, the more comments you get and the more emojis, you know, likes that you get, the more viewers that see your posts. And that is what all of you need to do because you need to start building your brand. You need to have people wanting to see what you have and what content you have. So this make this the start of your brand by posting something about this event, what you gained out of it, uh, what you thought, uh, anything of that nature. Okay, it doesn't have to be long, it doesn't have to be crazy, you don't have to have PowerPoint slides, just something something great. If you want to do a video testimonial, that's even cool too. So uh, with that being said, we're good to go. Yes. Uh, everybody, go to your rooms. Stop recording. <laughs> you know you scare me every time you do that when I do that. <laughs> so, this meeting is being recorded. Yes, yes it is. Is the meeting being recorded? I believe so. So uh, hopefully you guys are, are still enjoying yourselves. Uh, that you're getting something out of out of this, whether it be knowledge, whether whether it be um, you know leads uh, for hiring or leads for opportunities for either you or your spouse. Remember, don't forget your spouse in all of this. Um, and um, 
for those of you who don't know, Vets the Industry also caters to dependent children. So um, we have resources, free resources for them on the website. Um, we actually have a, a huge library of over 1,000 free resources, if you guys didn't know. We're just not a networking event. Uh, we were based, uh, uh, we're, we're born off of a resource library for uh, our military community. So check that out. Uh, if you haven't taken a picture yet, take a picture. I know you guys forgot when you were in the breakout rooms. So you have an opportunity now to take a picture. And it's super important because when you go onto LinkedIn or Facebook and you post a picture of this event, um, you're going to see this whole week LinkedIn plastered with that's the industry event. Don't be the one that's not in that in that mix. Be with the cool kids. All right. And make sure you tag everyone that's in the breakout room with you. Um, and you should be getting people's um, LinkedIn URLs in the main chat uh, and or in the in the breakout rooms with you. But you will also receive everybody after this event in the post event email, you will get the main chat transcript. It's gonna be like 80 pages. So don't let, don't let that freak you out, but uh, you can do control F to find what you're looking for. All right, um, you're gonna get a link to the YouTube video of this event. So everything that we've done the entire time, um, minus the breakout rooms, because we can't record those, is going to be on YouTube. So if you missed anything, if you came in a little bit late or you, you left a little early and came back, you can skip to the parts where you miss so you can make sure you are you are good to go. Um, and uh, so that's on our Vets Industry YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe, you really help us out. I am trying to hit that 1000 mark, really, really trying. Um, so we would appreciate you. Um, make sure you're following the Vets to Industry hashtag um, because a lot of posts that we do, we always tag Vets to Industry. Every post I make, I always tag Vets to Industry. So you'll be able to see um, posts as they come out uh, on your feed. Um, and the recruiters are using VTY underscore jobs to include Robert, who uses it in every single post. So don't miss out facts. on that. And facts. Um, I, I do want to... Um, uh, I've, I've got somebody who, who needs to speak, but first, um, I'd, I'd like to uh, ask um, if, well, no, I'll let him speak first. So, Ken, can you, uh, can you come up and, and speak about uh, what we talked about? You there? Yeah, yeah. I thanks, Brian. I, I would be happy to. So, uh, I mean, in the breakout room a few minutes ago, I was just kind of sharing a little bit of the culture of Watco. Again, if you just, if you came on later, um, uh, I'm Ken Killingsworth. I support the talent acquisition efforts uh, at Watco and Watco is a, is a uh, nationwide transportation and supply chain services company. I mean, we obviously have several uh, career opportunities in the trades and what I was doing in there is, selling, is sharing several of our of our, our corporate career opportunities. But I, before I do that, I kind of wanted to share a little bit about the culture of Wadco really, really quick, um, trying to be a good steward of time here. And then I'll go into those opportunities. And so, so Wadco was established about 39 years ago. Wadco actually stands for Web and Tim's, T-I-M-M-S's company. And so a guy named Dick Webb uh, worked in the railroad industry, the railroad industry, uh, regulation changed and he he remortgaged his home and leveraged everything he owned and he went and bought one locomotive and Watco started off as a terminal switching uh, a location moving freight uh, for a company called Boise Cascade in D. Ritter, Louisiana. Anybody in the army has been to Fort Polk knows that D. Ritter's right outside of Fort Polk and so that's where the company really started. It started with Dick Webb. Uh, he actually bought the company out from Mr. Tim's um, but they never changed the name and it stayed Wadco. Um, but it started out with, with Dick Webb and eight people. 39 years later, one location has turned into hundreds of locations in about 40 states. Uh, eight team members has turned into about 5,000 team members. And then one customer has turned into thousands of customers. And oh, by the way, we still have that same customer, Boise Cascade, that we did 39 years ago. And I think that really speaks to relationships and people. 
Um, and it wasn't too long ago that I was on V2I, and it's been a great place for a veteran to land there. Uh, going into some of the jobs, um, I will talk to you about, uh, so we've got four people service manager positions. That's what we call our HR managers. Um, two of them, well, two of them are in Texas. One's in Houston. The other one's in Lake Jackson, Texas, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and then New Orleans, Louisiana. And we also have a facility manager position in Maryland. Uh, we've got a business intelligence uh, project manager position, which is really about information management. Um, and so there is a, a PMPs credentialing and, and agile credentialing uh, experience perspective to that role. Um, and then um, we have an operations manager position in Springdale, Arkansas. That's a that's a field manager position, not necessarily uh, the same as operations in the military, obviously. And then we have a recruiter role open in Houston, Texas, a part of the, the talent acquisition team. So. Um, and then we've got we've got trade positions as well. So we've got op we've got career opportunities in railroad operations, and I'll let you know that railroading still has one of the best pensions across the nation's hands down today. And then locomotive mechanical as well as um, stevedoring, transload terminal operations as well as port operations. So if any of that is remotely interesting or you'd like to learn more, feel free to connect with me. I'll put my link in the chat. And uh, Brian, thank you very much. Back to you, sir. I appreciate that. Um, next up, I'd like to uh, talk about free resources um, that are available for um, veterans, military spouses, dependent children, transition service members, and even currently serving members. Um, so we have uh, quite a few that are out there that are uh, huge. And I might call on a few people so you guys aren't just hearing from me, but you're hearing from other people about those free resources. Um, first, I want to talk to you about um, Four Block. So, Four Block is a, a phenomenal career um, and professional uh, development um, coaching uh, program. Um, and what they do is for 12 weeks, 11, 11 weeks, they um, have you come once a week to their local location, or you can do the virtual uh, locations. And you're gonna learn and hear from uh, recruiters uh, from a, one specific company about uh, opportunities they have there, culture. Uh, and then you're gonna learn from those same recruiters and hiring managers about some kind of uh, skill um, like salary negotiation or resume writing, or interview prep, uh, multiple different things. LinkedIn, um, you're gonna learn about job market analysis, um, you're going to learn about triangulating your career. So there's quite a few things out there that you're going to learn about that you have no idea about now. Four Block is completely free. They're all over the country. Uh, so if you haven't uh, heard of them, um, definitely check them out. I'm a Four Block grad um, and I absolutely loved it. It helped me immensely. Literally, it changed the course of what career I did um, um, because I thought I knew what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a marketing manager and I had zero years of marketing experience and they uh, instructors basically uh, took me to the side and said, Brian, you're going to be a marketing analyst, not a marketing manager. I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I got I got years of marketing, uh, years of management experience. You know, I've got this uh, master's degree in management. Like, of course, I'm going to be a manager. And they say, no you're going to come in as a marketing analyst because you know absolutely nothing about the trade and you got to be okay with that. And I said, well, marketing analyst only makes $40,000. They said, yes, that's right. I said, well, I can't live off $40,000. I got six kids. They said, then you better find something else to do. And uh, they were right. Absolutely right. So, uh, um, so you, now I get to practice my marketing skills on some of our videos and stuff that you see. So, uh, uh, so that's that's what four block will provide for you uh, career direction, um, really analyzing what your uh, strengths are and 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 even people get jobs out of it from each event. Some someone either gets hired or has some great leads and builds great relationships with the, the recruiters from all the different companies. And these are like Coca-Cola and, you know, Delta and, you know, uh, I mean, I'll, the, the, the Nestle, the, the list goes on. 
Um, next up, I, I want to call on Daniel uh, so that you're not hearing from me. Um, talk about Betterati. Hey, Dan. You, you're on mute. I know. You caught me. Uh, yes. All right. Okay, Veterati. Well, uh, so um, I've been doing Veterati for about three years now. Uh, it is a mentoring service designed for uh, active duty veterans and military families. Um, <clears throat> you can search the list of uh, mentors like me uh, and uh make a, a veteran request and you can speak to people like me for an hour talk to them about their industry uh talk to them about transition uh talk to them about you name it uh my specialty is i've been a, a project manager for over 30 years in the it industry <clears throat> and the intel community and the federal service space and uh I'm in the Washington, D.C. area. I actually did time in the reserves, so I know how to juggle that. And I know about filing your retirement applications, too. So um, what else would you like to know about Veterati? I think that's, I think that's good. Um, so want to also talk to you guys about. I, I, I do have a question for you, Brian. Have you reactivated your account? I have not. I have been knee deep in vets to industry, and I've been doing a lot of my mentoring through LinkedIn chat. Right. <laughs> uh, I haven't found the hours of the day to uh, to devote to uh, phone calls yet. Um, yeah. So, well, there was a lot of great people out there, and uh, the system went down for about thirty days, and then so now people have to activate their accounts for people to find them. I cannot make a referral to you because you are not active. Well, you can make a referral to me anytime uh, and do a, a LinkedIn group chat introducing me to the person. And right. I will do my best to conversate with them um, as, uh, as I can. Um, yes. <laughs> but yeah, the, the calls are a little bit hard for me. I, I find that I can talk to a lot more people faster and give them a lot um, you know, good advice um, in that half an hour or hour, um, I can reach a whole lot of people uh, as opposed to just one. So uh, I want to talk about for, for those of you who are uh, veteran owned businesses or spouse owned businesses or uh, entrepreneurs, if you want to start a side hustle, there are free resources for you as well. So um, the Institute of Veterans and Military Families at a Syracuse University, you heard about the O2O program earlier today the Onward to Opportunity. They have a ton of different resources there for the entrepreneur. Um, they have um, the Entrepreneur, entrepreneur Bootcamp for Veterans, the EBV, uh, amazing program. They have uh, EBV Spark and regular EBV and EBV Ignite. So uh, each one provides a different level of support uh, and assistance. One is just uh, kind of online tutorials um, uh, about building your business. Uh, the EBV uh, has a 30 day um, of lessons, uh, asynchronous lessons. And then for seven days, you're in residence at one of the locations. I did mine in Missouri. Uh, they have one at Syracuse. They have one at University of Texas, I believe, um, so, or Texas A&M, excuse me. So there's all over the, all over the place. Um, so definitely check out EBV, uh, check out BWISE. So any uh, women veterans, um, there's a, a veteran women igniting the spirit of entrepreneurship, BWISE at an IVMF. So if this is an amazing uh, like couple, couple day event uh, where women veterans will get together and you'll learn in workshops, you know, how to build a business and what resources, there's a tons of networking that can happen because um, maybe your business needs somebody else's business. Maybe you need a distributor or, or maybe you need a certain supplies and this organization or this business provides that. Or you want a marketing firm uh, and somebody has a marketing company. 
whatever the case may be. So great opportunities. Um, you also have a, a program called Bunker Labs. So Bunker Labs is in like about 20, 23 locations nationwide. And what they do is they have a virtual in residence program um, or veterans in residence program, excuse me, where you go in and you'll, it's, it's like a incubator where you're gonna uh, bring your ideas for a business or wherever you are in that business and get the opportunity to uh, learn about how to get financing, how to make sure your business plan is good to go and uh, talk to um, leaders within the community and um, business leaders to get advice. Um, so it's really, really awesome. There's also something called Warrior Rising. Warrior Rising does all of that and it also um, will help you get financing for your uh, for your business. Uh, they also run pitch competitions. So if you want some free money, um, check your check out Warrior Rising. Uh, let's see, we um, Best Industry just um, actually uh, purchased some software um, that is uh, really going to help us um, organize our um, all of our business tools in one place. Um, and um, so if you want to know about that, um, it's, it's great. You can put your business plan on there, your, your financial data, uh, it can sync. Um, you've got templates, you know, cause you're gonna need tons of templates for your organization on um, uh, compliance and things of that nature. Uh, tons of tools all in one place, one dashboard. Um, so if you're interested in that, reach out to me and I'll get you the information of, uh, of the company. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, I know I'm missing other big ones I wanted to mention. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Oh, if you're still serving, um, one of the things is your your spouse um, can get a free year of LinkedIn premium with every PCS you make. Uh, or when uh, you are leaving the military, they get a free year LinkedIn uh, premium. And that's because uh, they want uh, the spouses to be able to build their own network uh, at the next location where they're going before they get there. Sounds awfully familiar to transitioning, trying to uh, build network when you are transitioning, getting out, um, but make sure you have it in advance so that when you the day you get out is not the day that you start trying to network to find and land a career. It doesn't work that way. It takes time to build a relationship. So, uh, you also, your service members, they can get a free PTSD service animal while on active duty. Um, there's tons of animal uh, resources like that. You're gonna find, if, um, if you need financial assistance, USA Cares will give financial assistance to you in, in crisis or in your daily life. If you need help with your electric bill or your rent or, or your mortgage or anything, reach out to USA Cares. There's so many other resources. I can't get through all of them, but um, go to vets2industry.org. Check out our resource library. I know you all like, okay, I will eventually. I'm telling you, your mind's gonna be blown and you're gonna be pissed off that all these resources exist and you didn't know about it when you were serving um, and couldn't tell your, your troops about it or use these resources yourself. Uh, I wonder how many of you uh, had heard about DOD Skillbridge too late so your last six months on active duty, you could have been in an internship and you didn't know about it. So uh, that's that's the kind of stuff that we want to get out to all service members. You know, it's uh, 3 million service members that are still serving active guard and reserves. We have 19 million veterans out there. We have 240,000 to 270,000 transition service members a year. We're at 44 suicides a day. Uh, it's crazy and it's all because they lack knowledge that will give them hope leaving the military because nobody kills themselves if they have hope doesn't doesn't work you have a resource in front of you that can fix whatever crisis you're in you're going to go for that that resource nobody kills themselves because they they don't have uh because they have hope in front of them so let's get the hope out to everybody I, i'll get off my soapbox and Matthew, um, you want to take it away with uh, anyone who's um, a veteran-owned business or spouse-owned business, and then we'll call on 
uh, the veterans uh, that have or have or service members that have about 100 days left before they get out to come and give their elevator pitch to the recruiters left in the room. Absolutely. So we'll ask you to raise your digital hand uh, for veteran owned or spouse owned businesses. Uh, as you do that, we've talked about a lot of stuff today. Um, if any of it added value to you and you can help us out, if you go to our main page, vestindustry.org, in the top right hand corner, there's a button that says donate. If you can give us a buck, if five dollars, it helps us keep the light on so we can keep doing this for everybody else. All right. And, and Brian said it before, uh, there's different tiers. If you want to sponsor us, if you want to do all that, that's super cool. What gets them a coin, Brian? Is it 25? Yeah, $25 gets you a best industry coin. 25 bucks gives you a V2I coin. And you're doing so much to help us continue to provide these services uh, to everyone else. So that's my pitch. If you can help us out, that's super cool. If not, give us a high five on LinkedIn. Hit us up on IG. Hit us up on Twitter, uh, Facebook. Give us a sub to our uh, YouTube channel, right? So yeah. there's lots of ways you can help us out. And uh, we and really appreciate that. In fact, if if you, instead of giving us a one-time donation, if you can give us like a 5 or $10 donation a month, just set it to recurring, that would be amazing. You're going to gonna miss 10 bucks a month, but it's going to do incredible things for us. Uh, and if everybody does that, I mean, think of think of what we can accomplish together. And all the people we can hire. <laughs> mm -hmm. So anyway, that's our that's our little financial uh, ask. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Now I, I just wanted to piggyback on what Brian said real quick. Brian, did you want to talk about um, you know folks? You know the holidays are coming up, and people are probably going to be you know looking at Amazon a lot. Can you, you want to talk about how they can help with that? Um, yeah, we're actually uh, on Amazon Smile. Um, if you've never heard of it, it's okay. About two years ago, I had never heard of it before. Amazon Smile is Amazon. It's just a different um, section in Amazon where you get the same um, products, services, everything is, is the same, but you can put in a charity uh, of your choice. And as you buy items for the holidays and whatnot, that like 0.5% from Amazon, not from your, not from you, but Amazon will pay that charity out for every item you purchase and it just increases in in uh, donations to us it doesn't come out of the cost of your your product or your or buying doesn't come out of your pocket doesn't come in it's not a not a tax amazon will, it's like a, it's like a matching but a matching to just a percentage of what the price of the product was that you purchased it's got to be eligible any, if this is anything it, it's got to be an eligible purchase but it's damn near everything okay but yeah, you have you to go to, to Amazon Smile smiles. in order to order, not that, to go to Amazon. And even when you go in after you do it for so long, like I already know how much money I've given because they, yeah. they calculate everything. And it's tax deductible, folks. Nice. We're a 501c3. So if you donate to us, write that down because you, you're, you're getting a tax write-off for it. Now, same thing for companies. Anything you donate to us, it's a write-off. Hey Brian, are we getting ready to go to a uh, to breakout room? No, uh, we're 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 going to start with our veteran-owned businesses. Doesn't okay. look like um, there is any businesses. that raised their hand. Oh, oh. we got there. There we go. All right. There we go. Yeah. All right. So All if right. you're a veteran-owned or spouse-owned business, raise your hand. Or if you're not quite sure if you want to get into business, um, but you have some ideas, go ahead and raise your hand as well. Don't be scared. Uh, All right, Jeff, go for yeah. it. Yeah, hey, thanks, Brian. Um, we're a recruiter, but we're also a veteran-owned business. Um, I don't know if I can share my screen. I would love to show yes, something. Yes. Yeah, cool. Uh, this is this should describe basically what Heirloom does. If I'm actually, is my screen being shared? Can you see? No, we got a black screen. Ah, okay, I'm gonna stop that. Um, it's just going to take a minute for it to, to um, catch up. Okay. I'm slow. Anyhow, what you see behind me is like old mm -hmm. media, VHS cassettes, reels, photo albums, uh, heirloom digital, and we put it on a private network, um, which can be accessed from any 
electronic device. And so no more VCRs, no more rewinding tapes. If you've got old media uh, or your parents or grandparents or you've inherited it from family members, um, keep it safe. Don't transfer it to a DVD that's just going to scratch or break. Uh, that's what Heirloom does. It makes it really simple. You can go to our website, Heirloom, with a silent H dot cloud. Um, order a digitizing kit, uh, a connect kit to connect with your memories. We send you out a box. You put everything in it. It's picked up by UPS, dropped, dropped off at a UPS store. And then within days, you're just seeing it all on your iPhone um, forever. Um, one of our technology partners is Amazon Web Services, AWS. Um, and so we've got, we're approaching a petabyte of people's memories, millions of memories, photos and videos on the Heirloom Cloud. They'll never go bad. It will never go bad. It's redundant data centers worldwide. So if you've got, if you're struggling with old media or you've got boxes of, of all this stuff from your multiple PCSs, which is the reason I started this company, um, We'd love to help you. So thank you for making a quick little pitch, Brian. Cheers. Jeff, uh, I'm going to use you because I have eight uh, tapes, uh, tape recorder tapes from 1990 that has my dad's story of his whole childhood up to, you know, adulthood. And one of the tapes is it's really hard to hear. So I don't know if it can be fixed, but I would love to get all those uh, digitalized. So I'm definitely reaching out to you 100%. Wow. Appreciate it. Love to help y'all. Uh, obviously, every every one military gets a discount. Um, and we're also on Spousely. You can find us there uh, for those of you who know Monica. Um, so you can reach out a B2I to us. partner. Yep. Awesome. Spousely is a vested industry partner. Yeah. Great organization. Thank you for making, let me make a pitch, Brian. Cheers. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Hope. Oh, hello and welcome. Uh, Jalisa, did you want to go? Yeah, Jalisa oh. kind of tried to sneak out. I saw that. Mm -mm. Exit right, not yet. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> well, I wasn't exactly sure how to, I guess, step into it. So I was just trying to be nosy and listen to everybody first and then kind of get context on what oh. I'm supposed to be sharing. Um, I mean, I guess I'll share a little bit and then I guess receive feedback. So Essentially, you know, I am still transitioning out of the military, so I'm working on opening up my business. I already have it together. It's a basically a film production company. Um, so, you know, we do creative content for our clients. I've basically done that for freelance for the last 10 years, but I wanted to kind of step into making that into like a production house where I'm not so much sourcing, but I actually have everything in house so that I can serve uh, different high profile clients. But I don't know if that's what I was supposed to be sharing right now. So that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's now, good. how did people um, purchase from you in, in your services? So that's the thing is like, I'm still building right now. Um, okay. I was like, I'm going to put my hand down because. No, I no, no. <laughs> because there's people in here that can probably support you in finding resources that can help you. Kind of like the ones that I just shared earlier. Um, yeah. You should definitely um, look into Be Wise. Um, out of Syracuse, completely free, and it'll change your world. Okay, can you drop that in the chat? I don't know how to spell that phonetically. Yeah. Yeah, and did you drop your information down there and say what you do uh, in the in the chat as well, so people can can connect with you? I it's drop done. Yeah. Down. <laughs> yes, I'll I'll put it back in there again. Um, it's on my LinkedIn page. Um. I'm still trying to figure out the whole LinkedIn sell myself personal brand if, situation. Uh, so yeah, if Hope is on the call, believe me, it's in the chat. Okay, <laughs> she, she'll take care of it for you. Awesome! Thank you so much for giving me a platform to share what what business venture I'm doing. So thank you guys. Absolutely, and all the best. Yeah, nice. Thank you. All, all right, right. in the chat for you. Nice. All right, so is it Hope's turn now? Some hopeful speaking? Yep. Okay, so um, I very rarely share everything that I do, but um, as far as like what you're talking about, Jaleesa, I have several people that I help with their businesses. So um, having been a corporate librarian in a big four accounting firm and other firms, basically I have a lot of stuff up here to share. <laughs> But I will show you guys what I actually do. So my business is a combination of things that most people don't know about. Number one, 
Um, my per my goal with everything that I do was because of a, a veteran problem. I like to solve them. So one of the problems I found with my veterans is that we get all these certifications and then we fail to renew them. We fail to do the PDUs or, or the, the extra classes we need to take during the year in order to actually sustain them. So I wanted to find a way to do that because I had so many veterans who were out there just at the last minute, they go take a training and then they find out they can't use those hours toward their certifications. And so I wanted to find an organization that could do that and have very cheap prices. So this is what I have. This is what I found. This is actually the company that puts together a lot of those trainings for those organizations. And um, I have the cheapest prices. They absolutely, they love me, but they hate me. I'm always asking for discounts. I'm not ever going to make any money off of this website. <laughs> Don't tell my husband that. <laughs> Okay, he probably already figured it out after 25 years. I still haven't made much money. But anyway, so the whole purpose of this is that if you um, have a certification and you need to get those classes in, these are some of the cheapest prices. And then if you see something out there that is like, okay, but can I get a discount? Let me know because I'm always hitting them up for more discounts and more lower prices. And so one of the things you will find on my site is that you will see the price they wanted to actually sell it for and it's like a line through it it's so it's kind of embarrassing like they didn't have to do that but i think they're making a point because i keep asking for more and more discounts so that's my response to veterans who are wasting money or who are not thinking about um renewing if you did it you, someone paid for it keep it going and with this website you can do so at the minimal cost believe me so the next thing that i do is what's the like website to, hope say again what's the website Oh, I put it in the chat. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Here it is. Oops. So it's in the chat. It's Come on. Chat. You know, she's, she's all about in the chat. All about <laughs> so, in the chat. So the next part of my business, if you can call it that, um, is a whole bunch of free webinars. You see the theme here, right? <laughs> and so in those webinars, I have, um, uh, I just put in there all last night, me and my daughter, we put in the, basically the schedule for the um, federal webinars that I do. Um, the difference is now I'm reaching out to Germany, Alaska, Hawaii. I have a class according to, to their time zone so that um, they too can participate. I mean, I've had some that really stuck with me from Japan, Germany, but they really shouldn't have had to. So that's what I'm going to now. It's a whole different way of thinking about it. I have some other things in there. Like if you wanna learn more about disability awareness, I have that class is coming up. If you do wanna jump into this, if you're already in the federal government, you wanna know how to grow. Um, I have this thing going with blacks in government, which is one of the employee associations. And that's it. Um, every month I have a class called what's next? What do you wanna be? And that's just that we explore six different avenues that you can take, but more than anything, we get a good discussion together about what it is that you're thinking about doing. Entrepreneurship is in there as well. And basically you see me in the chat. Um, so in my former life, I was a librarian and I love to share information. Can you tell? <laughs> because I need you to have something when I'm long gone that you can look at and say, what was that crazy woman saying? Oh yeah, let me go back to the link. <laughs> Okay, so here's the other thing that I do that I probably talk about this the least amount, and that is my one-on-one -on -one coaching. So I do one-on-one -on -one coaching for federal stuff. I do group coaching. I do public speaking um, for, on the federal side. That's talking about disabilities, the federal hiring process, how to build your resume. And I also talk about will businesses. Um, so, and then, um, I have just some general things out there that um, the consultations are out there because I never know who's gonna contact me for what. And so basically this is my business. The only thing I won't really get into are all the curriculums that I have, but if you're looking, if you're an individual who wants to add training to something that you're already doing, please connect with me. Um, I'm at the point right now that I have a little too much going on. So I can't do all the trainings that I wanna do, but I do have. Uh, over 500 curriculums. I sure do. Name it, name it. I probably have it. <laughs> so I'm here to help whatever I can do. Um, God pays my salary and got me an awesome job. 
Um, and so then that's why now I could go back to free stuff and not think about selling anything and feeling the pressure of selling something. I just want to get people where they need to be, whether that be to fill in the gaps, get them the job, whatever that is. That's all. That's awesome, Hope. Thank you. Oh, the other part of what I do is encourage other people to do what they should be doing like Dan Collins. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a pusher. I mean, I'm a helper. I encourage you to do <laughs> what you want to do best. Okay? That's all. That's a Freudian slip. So, all right, everyone, uh, now's the time for uh, those of you who are veterans, who are unemployed, um, those that are within 100 days of separating or retiring, and any mill spouse on here that's looking for employment, raise your digital hand, and you are going to be giving your 30 30 second elevator pitch about why a company should hire you um, and what you bring to the company. Um, so don't be afraid. This is your time. If a recruiter is still on this call, you know they truly care about you. Okay. Because this was a five hour event. And some of these recruiters have been here the whole time. So uh, get your name, get your face in front, especially if you didn't get a chance to talk to every single recruiter that's here, okay? So with that being said, just keep raising your hands. Uh, Lee, uh, what, how, many, uh, how, how close are you to transitioning or are you transitioning uh, before? So I'm uh, right at that 100 day mark. So I've, I've been on leave for the last couple of months, resetting my brain and uh, now it's, uh, now it's time to really get busy and get after it. All right, so, give us your 30 seconds. Yeah, so uh, hi, I'm Lee Mills, uh, transitioned out of the Air Force after 30 years, uh, wealth of experience in aircraft maintenance, uh, human resources, and culminated as the uh, senior advisor to the uh, the base commander where I'm in here in Alaska. I've been doing that for the last five years. So uh, staying in Alaska and, and really wanted to to tailor my experience and passion for people into HR roles, like HR business partner, senior manager roles, uh, to really just try to tie in my ability to connect people with the resources they need and set them up for success. So uh, excited about bringing that to, to your industry. Perfect, love it. Um, so any recruiters uh, here, uh, if you hear someone that you like or wanna to talk to more, um, this is your chance after they speak, go ahead and fight over them. I love it when they fight. Um, so uh, go for it. And uh, so were you open for a skill bridge? And were you, did you say you wanted to stay in Alaska? Yeah, I, I see a note in there. I, I didn't say where I am. Yes. Uh, so I actually have a skill bridge, a local one lined up for a couple of months. Um, they've been very honest and saying they're just going to give me some business experience, but it's probably not going to result in employment. So I'm con I'm not putting all my eggs in that basket and continuing to to look out there to see what's available. Okay, but did you want to did you want to stay there? Yes, yes, we're we're staying in Alaska, okay. so looking either here or remote. Sorry about that. Have you met Dixie? I have. We had great great conversation. She sent me some great resources to to get my head right. So yeah, she's she's awesome. Right, and I invite I invited him uh, to a number of resources and, and especially to VTI. Awesome. So she's been awesome. All right, Latoya, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Latoya Freitas. I am a 13 and a half year veteran. Um, I now am working as an executive assistant, looking to transition or pivot into more of a uh, HR, DE&I, uh, or a learning and development role. I hold a master's of business administration with a nonprofit uh, concentration and a bachelor's in human resource uh, management. Um, I'm looking to get out of, oh, I'm sorry, I'm in San Diego, California, um, well, North County, San Diego. Uh, San Diego is about an hour away from me. So I would love to do remote, remote or hybrid when I'm in the office, uh, minimal times to cut down on the commute. That is awesome. Um, uh, actually, um, for those of you who don't know, uh, we run on volunteers. So I would love if anyone wants to volunteer for best industry in many of the different sections that we have from research, resource, uh, research, excuse me, uh, HR, operations, uh, business development, uh, data analytics, um, IT, um, 
you know, come and come and find us. And I just I just heard that MBA with a nonprofit uh, concentration, and I got really excited. So if you ever want to volunteer for Best Industry, I know a nonprofit that that would love to have you. Well, I would need to get a I would need to get a little better paying job first. Then I'd be able to volunteer more of my time. Facts. Understand <laughs> completely. And that's why you're here. That's why somebody here has got a job for you. Ah, uh, sorry, career for you. Baby shark. Exactly what I'm looking for. I love baby shark. All right. I agree with that. By the way, I, I like baby shark too. Just. So. Mm -hmm. All right, Jeff. Hello, hi. I'm Jeff McCullough, uh, current air traffic control director of training for the Air Force. I'm separating here in a couple months. Uh, background in leadership and management. I have a bachelor's in aviation management and a professional human resources certificate. Looking to kind of pivot more into that role and, and help out with learning and development and honestly just treating people fairly, respectfully. You know, we're all the backbone of any industry, right? Most industries can't do it without people. So got to take care of our employees and, and help out with that employee relations. And that's what I'm looking to do. Love it. Um Definitely make sure, I mean, there's tons of organizations here that, that need HR. I mean, Ken, uh, Robert, I mean, everyone needs HR in, in their business. You can't run a business without HR. Um, but also, also check out the Best Industry um, Careers page um, for the Fusion Cell uh, job board and the Recruit Military. They have tons, I mean, talking thousands of positions. Um, and so get on there. Check it out, apply for as many as you can. Uh, reach out to us if you need help with your resume. Um, Cause we have, there's free resources to help you out with that, that we'll get you connected to. Um, so, uh, and this, this is your first time here, correct? Yes, yep. Yeah, we just kind of connected the other day, you and I and, and talked yeah. a little bit. So I really appreciate it. And uh, real quick, yeah, Robert asked me in the chat. Oh, okay, Stacy helped me out. Yeah, the, the Pittsburgh kind of Youngstown, Ohio area is where I'm looking to relocate. I'm currently in Delaware, but. Perfect. All right. Well, hopefully you land something from this event. And I want to hear, I want to hear you accepted a role. Yeah, absolutely. Next, by next event. All right, Darcy, how are you doing? Good. How are you? Doing well. So this is my second event. Um, I am a 21 year um, in the aviation world. I was an NFO and uh in the Navy and then transitioned into physiology. So the last 13 years I've spent in um, kind of a teaching instructor uh, type uh, role, but I am now trying to pivot into data analytics. And um, I've had quite a bit of opportunity throughout my career to work with data and uh, analysis and creating, you know, data visualizations. Um, which I feel is, you know, uh, beneficial for any company because every company has data that um, needs to be looked at to be able to determine, you know, a whole variety of different business insights. So, um, you know, I think my experience um, just in general in the military, you know, working with people, um, a lot of those soft skills that I've developed, um, along with, you know, my, um, experience with data analytics currently, um, I have a master's in exercise science. So I have had the opportunity to do, um, quite a bit of like statistical analysis, um, working on my Google data analytics certification, um, along with some other courses. Um, I will be doing a skill bridge with, uh, Analect. Um, their marketing, uh, media marketing um, intelligence um, company. I'll be doing that starting in December and um, we'll be retiring in March. So a little bit out of the hundred days, but, you know, coming up pretty quickly. Um, so I'm, you know, looking for any sort of role um, kind of in the data analytics. I'm not a hundred percent sure on the field, um, so I'm open to that. I'm currently in the Pensacola, Florida area, um, and I'm trying to stay, uh, in this area just due to my like situation with, you know, family situation. Um, so looking mostly for remote or kind of the Gulf coast, um, area. 
Awesome. Yes, an NFO is a naval flight officer. So sorry, I saw some people <laughs> in the chat. <laughs> yeah, I gotta get rid of those acronyms. I know, right? Um, over to the dark me, side I, in my in my written out one, uh, my elevator's pitch. I'm like a naval flight officer, aka Goose from Top Gun. <laughs> Most people understand that. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, and, uh, I, so before um, Latoya, there was a comment from. Uh, Robert in there uh, with a, a link to a careers specifically for you. If you scroll up a little bit, you'll see that from Robert Corgi. Okay, Matthew, what you got? No, that was it. I, I wanted to make sure that Latoya knew about that post from Robert in, uh, in, uh, in the chat. So thank you. We got eagle eyes, don't we? <laughs> All right. So uh, thank you, Darcy. Uh, Shallon? Shaylin. Shaylin. Oh, okay. Uh, I, 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 I couldn't tell if the L was before the Y or the Y before the L. So. Yeah. All right. Well, well, let us know about you. It's a little hard to hear you. Okay. My name is Shaylin Llewellyn. I'm transitioning. I've transitioned out, out of the Air Force. Um, October was my last day. Um, my background is logistics, supply chain management. And I'm looking for something that's hybrid or within the Lubbock, Texas area. I have a master's in management and a certification in organizational leadership. And I also have my bachelor's in um, psychology. So I'm looking to stay within the logistics or try to transition into the project management field. But thank you. Awesome. I know a military hiring accelerator, the company I work for, uh, we've got some project coordinator, project manager roles open on our job board. Want to check that out? And I know there's tons of project manager roles open on our careers page in uh, Fusion Cell and Recruit Military. So, um, you know, apply, apply, apply. Um, one thing that I made a mistake of when I was uh, in is I only applied to one place at a time because I think, well, I can't, I can't send her my resume or apply, you know, to two companies at the same time. It, it was completely dumb. <laughs> so you can apply to as many companies, as many roles as you can at the same time. Just remember to name your resume with the company's name so you don't send the wrong resume to the wrong company. Uh, also make sure that you um, uh, keep like a folder. Uh, so anytime that you, with the job description, make sure you save the job description and put it into a folder with the corresponding resume. And if you're not sending, if you're sending us like the same resume to multiple companies, do not put the company name in your resume because you're going to forget and you're going to send it to the wrong company. So um, you can name the folders with the name of the company and kind of just drop your your resume in there, drop the job description, and you can do this for as many as many roles as you want. You can apply for multiple roles at the same company. I didn't realize that. You can do that. Um, actually, somebody um, uh, just before this event, uh, Craig Rainey, he was on. Uh, he just got two um, job offers from Wells Fargo for two different jobs at Wells Fargo. So he's got he's got the pick. Um, so they just wanted to push that out there for you all. And for those of you watching on recording, uh, sorry, sorry I didn't tell you about it earlier. All right, Robert, what you got? Hey, I just want to second what you said. Hey, veterans and women especially actually don't apply for multiple jobs at the same time, but women also won't apply for jobs if they don't think they're not qualified. They could have nine of the 10 qualifications and they're like, oh, I don't have all of them and they won't apply. I'm telling women and it's a, it's a, pro, it's, it's a flaw and that women will just, will, women will do that. And I've talked to a lot of them like, oh, I don't, I don't qualify for that one. I'm missing this certification. I go in and apply because I talked to the hiring managers and they, they will waive certain things. I sat next to the cybersecurity manager and the cybersecurity manager says, yeah, it says they got to have a bachelor's degree, but I just really need these certifications, which you can just go to the, the community college down the road, get the certifications and you don't need the bachelor's degree. Okay. So uh, do it, apply for the jobs, you know, and I tell veterans, look, let them turn you down. You know, you don't turn yourself down, let them do it. Um, but, uh, guys will apply for everything, whether they're qualified or not. You know, uh, some guys will only apply for one thing at a time and that's their mentality, but, uh, women won't. Okay. So I'm just telling you that now. 
that's it. Yeah, actually, one thing about military hiring accelerator is if you are have seven to eight of the 10, you know, 80% or 70% there, we are going to send you to the company um, because everything is negotiable, all right, or waivable, um, or you can get training on the job for the certification you're missing. So we'd rather put you in front and then let them say no than you self-eliminate. Do not self-eliminate yourself. Um, Pat, oh, you guys are, Pataria? Yeah, hi, my name is Pataria. Um, yes. Yeah, you got it right. <laughs> it's a Thai name, I'm from Thailand. I'm a military spouse and we are located in Oxnard, uh, Ventura in California. And I'm just recently graduated a master degree concentration in IT. I am looking for a job in marketing field or the project management field. Uh, I'll say you went on mute, but uh, we hope you come to the military spouse mixer too on November 5th. Uh, and then now that Brian's off mute, I'll let him go keep going. Uh, yeah. Um, so for everyone here, um, just so you know, a mil the mill spouse mixer is not just for mill spouses. I know it's terrible branding on our part to, uh, to, to say that, but uh, it's open to veterans as well as current service members because we have recruiters that come on there that also come on to our networking events or some recruiters that will only come to the middle spouse mixer, but have roles for veterans and for transition service members. So make sure you come, make sure you bring your spouse. They don't have to be on video if they don't want to, because I know that's an issue. Um, my, my wife's the same way. Um, so you know that she's not on these calls. <laughs> Um, so I know it's hard sometimes dragging your significant other to, to something new, um, but um, try at least because um, there's a lot of open roles out there for them, remote roles, um, roles that move with them. Uh, just just you know, try your best to make this a team team game when you're as you're transitioning and they need help. And actually, speaking of no spouse mixer, I'm going to pass it off to uh, Jessica, who actually runs the mill spouse mixer. Jessica. Thank you so much, Brian. I just wanted to tell everyone that we have secured our speaker for our November uh, event. So we will have Lapora Lindsay um, coming nice. to us to really have that conversation about what we are going through, everyone, what we're going through about that um, uh, self-worth inspiring us as we're going through our career journey. So I really wanted to bring that focus and highlight to those that are seeking employment opportunities. And I'm so excited. If you have not registered, please register. You do not want to miss out on this event. event. Uh, even what Brian said, yes, it is a focus for our male spouses, but everyone is welcome. So please tell a friend to bring a friend to bring their friends to this event. You don't want to miss it. Thank you so much. And I hope to see everyone next month. Awesome. And uh, Pateria, you've got two recruiters in the chat that are asking uh, for you. One, uh, Robert Corchi has eight openings in court. I can't say that. Okay. Fort Wanini is Oxnard, basically. Navy base. Same gotcha. Yeah. yeah, that's where I'm at. Thank you. Okay, so there's eight openings there. Uh, so, you know, he left the uh, the link. So just uh, scroll up and check it out. Also, um, Jesse Martinez asks you to uh, connect with him on LinkedIn and send him your resume. Okay, yeah. Thank you. I'll do that. Look All at right. that. How awesome is remote, this? By the way, we're, we're, I'm throwing this out there. We're fully remote, complete PR marketing company um, worldwide. I got a baby crying in the background, but um, yeah, so um, a lot of your skills would be very relevant. So I'd really like to talk with you. Awesome. See, this is this is what this is about. <laughs> All right. Uh, I actually have seen at the Mill Spouse Mixer, somebody come on there, um, did not have a job, was really needing one and was hired the next day so literally a one day that's absolutely for, true yeah, hey, the, you know, 
real quick, did you just, those of you who didn't come on, because we only had like five people come on or six, and, and there's a, still a lot more than that here. Um, if you didn't come on, you just saw a young lady pitch herself and nine possibilities, eight from Robert, one from Jesse. Right now, less than, less than two minutes. If that doesn't make you come out and start talking and start reaching out and looking at the chat because these guys didn't come on to talk to her. They, they put it in the chat. Then what more can we do for you? I, and, and I mean that seriously. What more can be done for you? You're, you you got to put yourself out there. And, you, and, and there are people here ready to help. This is the safest place that you're ever going to be when it comes to having somebody help you. Understanding that, okay, you're scared, you're nervous, you're, 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 you're feeling insecure, you're feeling imposter syndrome. We've all been through that. Every last one of us who's on the other side. Put yourself out there now. We're not going to make fun of you. We're not going to belittle you. We're going to say, hey, come on. Okay? So go ahead. I, I, Tim, I didn't see you speaking before. And then Robert. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually pretty ways outside of that 100 days. Um, I just figured, why not? <laughs> um, so I'm Tim Bennett. I am a senior physical. I've been in the Army now for 21 years. I'll uh, separate next year after 22 and a half years in August. I'm currently the senior physical security specialist for the Army Garrison here in Okinawa. With that, my primary job is doing like arms room inspections, um, secure vault inspections, anywhere restricted access. I do the physical security assessment for those areas across everything the Army owns here in Okinawa. I have my associate's degree in public, in, uh, public safety and security with emphasis on practitioner. I have conventional physical security, electronic security system design course, site acceptance course, testing course. I've done my Google PMP. Uh, I, excuse me, I've got a little bit of a cold going on. Uh, I'm available for a skill bridge starting in March of next year. Whenever I fully separate transition next year, I want to continue doing physical security program management. And, uh, thank you. Tim, just yes. to let you know, you're not too far out. Uh, okay? Uh, this is exactly when you want to start doing it. Okay? You want to start talking to people now. Okay? You're in Okinawa. I don't know if you're going to end up back in the States or not. Absolutely, I am. Okay, I so, am. <laughs> all right. So then what are you going to do? Wait till you get back in the States? Start looking for a job? No. No. You want to start networking now. And talking to these recruiters and talking to people, VSOs, people who've been through what you're going through, okay, to give you some inspiration, to give you some connections, so that when you end up back in the States, now you're ready to work. Now you've got a, now you might even have a position. You might even know where you're ending up because you spoke to somebody, you developed a relationship. And now they want you. So I have a tip. I have a tip for everybody. Um, so if you find, if you start researching even a year out, job descriptions in the kind of roles that you're interested in, save those job descriptions. Because once you're um, getting closer, uh, as you, you know, you can start tailoring your resume to that job description early. Um, because the same job description or one very close to it is going to pop up in, in other companies, such as like a facilities manager. We have facilities manager positions open right now at, at Military Hiring Accelerator. Tim, I suggest you go, you copy the job description of what that is, and you save it. Uh, and then you, you start 
tailoring a resume. You're going to have a master resume that you're going to vomit everything you've ever done in your life on. All right. <laughs> if you don't have a master resume, you're wrong. And then you're going to have a job tailored resume. And as you create bullets uh, for your, your new resume and you splice and dice from your master resume to make the bullets look good, and out, then what you want to do is copy that and put it back into your master resume bullet bank. As a as a new uh, new bullet, um, because you might be able to use that same bullet later on for another company um, that you created. You don't delete the bullets that you had. You just add that to your your bullet bank. Um, so, little tip for me, whether or not you care about it or not. And another thank one, you, Brad. And, and another one, Tim. Onet.org. I, I I keep messing up. Onet.org. You can type in security manager, and not only will it give you everything that you need, certifications, education level, um, uh, uh, data analysis for, for employment opportunities, wage, everything, but it's going to give you alternate names for those positions. Understand that you don't speak the civilian language, okay? And just like the Army and the Navy have different titles for the same position, 06 in the Army Colonel, 06 in the Navy as a captain, right? In the civilian world, they will have different titles for the same position. So if you're not going to onet.org and finding out what some of those titles are, you're cutting your opportunities tremendously. Thanks, Alfred. Yeah, no, I've definitely been on ONET quite a bit. Okay, good, good. And for everybody else, you need to be on that, especially if, if you want to do something physical security, which could be, um, you, you know, it, it could be facilities security, it could be facilities management, it could a whole bunch of different names for the same thing. So, yeah, and make sure you see Robert's, uh, Robert Lefts and stuff from Okinawa uh, in the chat. So make sure you check that out. All right, Sean, what's going on? Can I just ask Tim one last question? Oh, of course. Tell me. Uh, um, Tim, can you share where you're going to be um, coming back to within the US? So the, our, my primary target zone, I guess, is um, Washington and Alaska. Washington, Washington State? State? Yeah, Washington State in Alaska. Yeah, Washington State. Dad, can you please start with Calder, please? Of course. I say Calder, not Calder. Oh, yeah. I'm over here. It's okay. <laughs> little ones Little ones are welcome here. Uh, this the is, only reason I asked. Um, I, I, um, I sent him to uh, Lori Norris for help. And so there's other others as well that are out there. But Tim and I got started a long time ago. And I sent him to Lori and there's others are, that are, can help you out with your resume. And I'm taking the label off. Yeah, and Rose, I think you had something else you were going to say, right? Dad, I yes. didn't think I'll know um, it's mine. The only reason I ask is um, for Tim is physical security. Um, there are certain hubs across the United States that are hotbeds for data centers. And um, physical security at data centers can be very lucrative. Um, for example, Ashburn, Virginia, and also parts of Colorado and the general Pacific Northwest slash Great West region um, are great locations. So just keep that in mind in terms of potential opportunity. Awesome. All right, uh, let's go on to, to Sean. And then uh, Sam and Eva. Yeah, I just wanted to add that um, you know a, a lot of just as a, a, a tip, uh, whatever career field you want to get into, you know, um, there's this thing called informational interviews. And so what that is is you know you reach out to somebody on LinkedIn or you, you reach out to somebody and have like a 20 minute conversation and talk to them about their journey. And the reason why I su would suggest that is because if you're interested in you know. Uh, project management, but you don't know the field you want to be in, you know, you can reach out to somebody in, I don't know, aviation, transportation, et cetera, who's doing project management and, and just talk to them about a day in the life. 
And after talking with them, I mean, you're, you're not, you know, you, you're getting some inside information from them. You don't want to get, you know, you don't want them to, you know, give you everything about everything uh, as far as the field that you're interested in. But you definitely, if you, if you, if you found that that's the company, that's a target company for you, you want to reach out to somebody, particularly if it's a veteran, uh, and just kind of ask them some questions about how they got there, their journey, et cetera. And that will help you, so, you know, fill in some of the blanks. The goal is for them to be interested enough in you that they say, hey, let me see your resume, you know, and they, and they take a look at your resume and they say, you know what, here's what I want you to do. I want you to do it like this. And they tell you what to, you know, to, to do with it because what they're trying to, what they're trying to do is, you know, they're giving you some free consultation and trying to get you into their organization by, you know, uh, sharing with you the language that their recruiters and hiring managers, et cetera, might be looking for. And then, so you do what they ask and then you give it back. Maybe they'll say, uh, you know what, I'm going to walk this over to, uh, you know, Tim, Bob, or Jane and, and let them know that they should be talking to you. So doing some informational interviews is very helpful. And I see Stacy dropped a link for informational interviews in the chat as well. And I, I did too. Um, I think it's a valuable tool and it might be very helpful for everyone. So thanks. That's great. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Sam, what you got, bud? Uh, you're muted, Sam. There you go. I think Sean was before me. Sean just talked. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Okay. Uh, good Good evening. Uh, my name is Sam Eskew. I am a logistics professional, 15 plus years in the logistics field in Army and DOD agencies. Uh, experience doing uh, the application of a wide range of qualitative, quantitative methods for assessment and improvement of logistics um, and advanced logistics principles, concepts, planning processes in addition to uh, compliance monitoring for the past two and a half years. Um, looking for opportunities either in the uh, third party logistics space, um, potentially the uh, consulting arena and we're either looking to stay in Northern Virginia or move into the Southeast in the Atlanta area. Oh, well, I'm in Atlanta and Alfredo is in Virginia. So um, I would definitely reach out to Alfredo. And uh, to me, there's somebody in Atlanta that um, is like the guru of logistics and he's partnered with us, Scott Lutton uh, from Supply Now Radio. Um, he's, a, he's a supply and logistics guru. He knows everybody in Atlanta and, and around. So that's a connection for you. Reach out to me, I'll get you that connection. Um, and then Alfredo um, can help you out in Virginia because he knows everybody. I know a few people. Actually, everybody knows him. That's how important he is in Virginia. That's because I have a bad memory, so I don't really know if I know them or not. <laughs> and I count on them to know me. Hi, <laughs> uh, Ava. Hi, my name is Ava Gerdeman. I'm a military spouse. We just moved to Niceville, Florida, near Eglin Air Force Base. I'm a four-year service veteran. I have a four-year degree in communication studies. I went back for an associate's degree in general education with a focus in health and fitness science. Most recently, I worked as a personal trainer and group fitness instructor, so I prefer to work with people and inside. Having a short commute or working remote is important to me. I appreciate being invited to the event today. And I look forward to making connections. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, so hopefully somebody's got something out. I would I would look out for anything that Robert posts because uh, he's pretty pretty sharp and fast on the open roles for people. Uh, and I just found out that Carla joined us. Uh, Carla, uh, are you recruiting for any roles? Oh goodness, sorry, my voice. I've been interviewing like ten to twelve people or more a day. So my voice is gone today. I'm still working. Anyways, yes, I have 27 roles open with me. Mostly they are on site. They're not a uh, remote as um as for Maria hotels. <clears throat> I have uh, HR roles. I have um, the assistant director. I have operations manager. I have front desk manager, front office manager, which is a similar to the director of front office. Um, let's see, I have 
lots of events manager roles in San Diego. I have in San Francisco, Seattle. So there, I have a lot of roles, a lot of group roles there. And um, I will just, um, if you want to connect on LinkedIn, I always post my roles there. I also have a link tree with all the roles that I personally am dealing with. Uh, one thing that I want to um, say is when I see veterans transition military resumes, they are not... Um, Good? No, they, they are good if you know how to read military lingo, you know what I mean? Right. Like, I, sometimes I was like, if I'm not on the brain, like, let's say something, I, I was HR, something that's not really HR related. I don't even know what they're saying and I was in the military. So please do not use military, just like, they don't know what's a brigade. They don't know what's the name of the system. It makes no sense. So I, unfortunately, I do. Yeah. I, I I cannot sell y'all for the hiring manager if I, you know, if they won't understand. So just make sure your resume, it speaks civilian, not military. So you know what, everybody, another tip for me, um, if you are, are trying to figure out how to translate certain words uh, so that they'll fit on your resume, go and get on an informational interview with a recruiter. Yeah. Uh, wow. And then ask them, hey, um, does this make sense in civilianese? And, uh, yeah. and they <laughs> yeah. will tell you whether or not to scratch it out, uh, change it, uh, whatever. But get on a 25, 30 minute you know, call, ask for, ask for 15 or 20, and hopefully they'll say, hey, let's stay on for another 10 minutes to go through this. Um, get on an informational interview, find them on LinkedIn. Uh, you have a ton of recruiters here. So if they come to a B2I event, um, most likely they're the ones that you want to reach out to first. Let me tell uh, let me yeah, just say something that um, I didn't know that, but I think if you reach out for a recruiter, most likely you're not getting a response within like a month or two because, sorry, hold on, mate. Probably because they're busy. <laughs> they're recruiting um, is, is what I would assume. Yeah, but you, you'll, the answer you you is always going to be no if you don't ask. 100% correct. Wayne Gressy and, said you, you miss all the shots you don't take. Right. Let me, let so me, yeah. Uh, <laughs> very, very nice office reference right there. Um, real quick, since we're talking about interviews, okay, a lot of interviews now are going to be. Okay, happening. sorry. <laughs> Oh, that's fine, Carl. You want to finish? Yes, please. Uh, because this is very important. Um, I, if you want to reach out to the recruiter, that's fine. But I receive tons of messages a day, and I'm still trying to catch up and survive with a. I personally recommend and all the referrals that I get. I went all the way to the last phase with Amazon. Uh, I was offered a job, but I declined with Meta, with Facebook, with Facebook is Meta, uh, Google. But uh, the thing is that I got referrals from employees, recruiter they have. I am just like a simple recruiter. I can imagine a recruiter for big firms. Like I personally suggest like get in touch with someone that it is in the same role in the same department that you want. They will say that you will give you a personal referral. They will um, advocate for you. You know, of course, reach, reach out to recruiters, but don't expect to hear back right away. And please do not come and say, Hey, what do you have there for me? Hey, look at my Facebook, my LinkedIn. What do you have there for me? I have tons of messages, including for, hey, I'm looking for a skilled bridge. What do you have there for me? Do your due diligence and say, hey, I apply for this job. You know what I mean? Like, it's not my job. We are not career coaches and we're not paid to find you a job. That's your job to find you a job. I'm here to help. You know what I mean? Please do not just say, hey, what do you have there for me? I, I promise I have like at least 10 message a day asking me the same thing. Yeah, yeah. great point. Yeah. Go ahead, Alfredo. Yeah, so a lot of these interviews that are going to happen, a lot of this networking that's going to happen, it's going to happen right here on Zoom. 
It's going to happen in teams. Okay. Understand that this right here, what's happening right here, is just as important as if you're going into the space. So what does that mean? That means lighting so I can see you. That means centering yourself. Okay. If you notice, I'm in the middle, right? I'm not like this. Okay. I'm not like this. You can see I'm centered. Okay. Top has to be dressed. What you're wearing underneath, I don't care because I'm not going to ask you to stand up more than like, okay. But you a, a, a decent shirt on. You better. If, if it's a professional interview, you better have a tie on, okay? You see all this crap in the background? You know why I have this stuff up here? Because I got a job. I don't care what you're thinking. I don't care if you're distracted, okay? If you don't have a job, you might want to be careful because whatever's in the background is something that I, as an interviewer, as, as, as a recruiter, might pick up. And now you know what happens? Unconscious bias. Okay? I, I talking to somebody yesterday. Uh, no, excuse me, two days ago. You know what I noticed in the background? Rainbow flag. Now, I don't give a crap. But I told her about it. And she said, yeah, it's because, you know, whatever. And I'm like, hey, hey, that's on you. But I want you to know that if I saw it, somebody else saw it. And now that person might not be as forgiving about their lifestyle as I am. And now you know what happens? She lost out on a job. Or she lost out on a potential interview. Not because she's LBTQ. Because if it was me, I'd never say it. Right? I just say, weren't qualified. I didn't ask you what your sexuality is, but you told me by simply having that bag, in the, uh, that flag in the background. So understand the way you present yourself here in this little box that I'm looking at in your house, in your room, is going to click off a bunch of things. And you don't know if that is going to lead to me showing some kind of unconscious bias or conscious bias. Don't set yourself up for failure. Unless you got a job already like I do, then I don't give a damn. I don't care what you think, okay? But you guys need to if you're transitioning. Hey, so we have 15 more minutes. Um, so with that being said, if anyone has any questions, you've got all the experts in here that you could possibly want, um, the recruiters that have been around for a while, um, what are you afraid of, you know, uh, you know in, in your transition? What's, what, what's the biggest fear that you have? Let us try to assuage those fears uh, or at least mitigate um, the severity of them. So who's got something that they want to ask? to um, our, I'll say panel, <laughs> but our, our, our family here. Don't, don't be, be scared. Afraid. Yeah, don't be scared. Go ahead, Sam. Sure, my, uh, thank you. My biggest, biggest fear or biggest unknown is how do I know I'm gonna like what I do when I get out? So I've done the informational <laughs> interviews. <laughs> They said, hey, we do this, we look at spreadsheets, we you know, spend 20 minutes a day doing, sitting in front of the computer, two hours walking around, et cetera. Um, I know I don't have to stay in the same job once I get out of the military for a long time, um, but if anybody can speak to, to, to that journey and how they kind of handled that. Robert, you got something? Yeah, hey, um, okay, here's what I tell people all the time. Th consider these four things. Do you want to work inside? That's one. Do you want to work outside? That's number two. Do you want to talk to people or do you not want to talk to people? So those four things, those are the things that I feel are very important. The fifth thing I guess you could say is how far do you want your commute to be? Okay. Reason being, 
and I and I tell people this: if you want to not talk to somebody, then a sales position is not your thing, right? Because you're going to talk to people all the time. A uh, service consultant at the dealership talk to people. They make phone cold phone calls, whatever. We have engineers that give presentations. If you're one of those people that can't give a presentation that night, might not be your thing. Um, you know, uh, but you're right. Uh, you really don't know until you uh, get out of the military and you start your first job, whether you're going to like it or not. That's why service members, when they get out, they're on their fifth and sixth job within about a couple of years or whatever. Listen, I got out of the military after 20 years. I am on my first job still. I've been working for Hyundai for 10 years now. That is very uncommon. Okay, a lot of a lot of people are on their fifth. A lot of friends of mine are on their fourth and fifth job by now. They they're surprised I'm still with Hyundai doing the same thing. But my job isn't the same. It has evolved over the years. I continue to make myself uh, more marketable to them. Okay, and that's the one thing is uh, like I said, those four things. I think you know you know yourself better than anybody. If you don't want to work inside, then don't be looking for an office job. You know, and I get people all the time that say, hey, I want to live in, in San Diego. I want to work in San Diego. And I go, OK, you're going to have to work in one of those office buildings or work for the county. And they go, I don't have any skill set for that. Then, you, then you're not going to be able to work in San Diego. And that's what I tell them. I will crush more dreams than I do sometimes help. I'm trying to get put the reality in. And I'm not kidding, you know, um, because I get people that say, hey, I want to work within 10 miles of where I live. I go, that ain't possible. If you live in 29 Palms, you just, you got to drive 60 miles just to get down the hill to Palm Springs, okay? If you live in 29 Palms, if you work on the base, you have a base job. If you don't work on the base and you work in town, you work at McDonald's, you work at Jack in a Box, and you work at Stater Brothers. That's it, okay? So I tell people you got to be able to at least consider your commute. At least apply for a job within 30 to 50 miles of that of that uh, of your surrounding area. There was a study done not too long ago. Most people live and grew up and work now within 12 miles of where they grew up. It, and now military is the exception, but a lot of people are like that. Think about your friends right now. That's it. That's some good stuff right there, Robert. Yeah, think about it. Um, I uh, would also like to uh, piggyback on what Rob said. Go ahead, um, Sally. You don't know until you know. Um, I feel like this is good advice, not just for military, but also for folks that are like new graduates or students that are soon entering the workforce. There is no such thing as a perfect job and you don't know what you might like or don't like until you try it. So you have to be willing to put yourself out there and try different things. Um, like I've done a bunch of different things from business to government affairs, to IT, to working as a linguist. To, I'm also a medical interpreter. Like I've jumped around and sometimes just like in math class when we were all back in fifth grade and they taught us process of elimination, sometimes you have to uh, like trial by error. You might get closer to doing what you want to do by figuring out what you don't want to do. Like you might mm -hmm. do something and figure out, hey, I don't like that. I don't want to do it. And you make a change. You decide to shift, you know? So. And then another thing is, um, as Rob said, realistic expectations. Um, something I uh, get a, just a little bit missed about is there seems to be this great obsession with like finding the unicorn perfect job that pays six figures and that's great and all, but even the most perfect jobs, like I work in tech and it's great in the grand scheme of things, but there are still, even at that dream job that people dream about or talk about, there are going to be frustrations, inconveniences, things that you gonna get annoyed about. There are gonna be people that you work with that you don't like. There are going to be annoyances. There's gonna be technical glitches. There's going to be things that frustrate you. Not every day is rainbows and unicorns. So just make sure you have realistic expectations and just keep that in mind when you're working. Like, it's okay to jump ship and do different things, but just realize that in every job, there are going to be things that you don't necessarily enjoy dealing with, but that's, that's also just life. Like you have to, what's the cost versus the benefit? And like, can you put up with it? You know, it's, it's just making sure you have realistic expectations and maintain perspective. Mm -hmm. That's some good words right there, Shelly. Um, Latoya. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Let me lower my hand real quick. 
Um, so I would love to ask this question. I asked it in the um, breakout room, but then we got uh, we got booed out. So I my issue is I got out the Navy. You know, I started moving up, moving up the ladder as an executive assistant. Now I'm making really, really good money, but my job is not a fit for me. So I'm wanting to pivot careers, but I'm mommy, I'm seeing that mommy. I'm going to have to take a huge Help pay me, cut. Um, or, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to take a huge pay cut or stay with what I'm doing. And I don't want to stay with what I'm doing. This, the job is going to kill me one day if I don't, if I don't pivot careers. And so how do I, how do I navigate that living in San Diego County, having a huge mortgage, like everybody else here? Uh, what, what do I do from here? So I want to take that. Um, so those of you who might know my transition story. I started working for Wells Fargo as a consultant out of the service. And I was a security forces member in the Air Force. I was a cop. Um, you know, so you know, the last thing that I had ever thought I'd be doing was working for a bank. And I didn't even know what a consultant was until six months before I got out of the military. Literally, didn't know what a consultant was. And then I became one. And I was making good money from the start. Like I asked for 80,000 and they gave me 126. That's how crazy it was. Um, so I worked there for two years, well, really three years. Um, the last year, uh, I found it wasn't really my passion. It wasn't. It wasn't the thing that that, that kept me uh, kept me happy. I mean, it fed my belly, but that's the industry fed my soul. And when I got to the end of that three years, I decided I'm I'm going to leave. Um, I ended up taking a forty thousand dollar pay cut. Um, to to work for something that's my passion that's helping service members out um and, and families uh was it hard yes are we like paycheck to paycheck now yes um uh, thankfully the my disability and my retirement pay are, are helping cushion it but i got six kids um so uh you kind of just need to know what you need to live and realize that if you can get closer to your passion you at least are happy um with with your day-to-day -day and think about the least the less amount of stress that you will have at home and the ability to make sure your, your family members aren't dealing with the the stress that you have every day you want to complain from work so that that's that's priceless i mean there, there's probably a cost to that um a monetary cost but really um you know if you can survive you can live at, you know, based on what your lifestyle choices are, um, then take the pay cut um, and then move up uh, in, in the job that you are based on your merit, based on what you do. So that's my personal story. Um, yeah, and, I don't know if that'll help. And, and remember, it's not just the money. Okay, like I was saying in one of the breakout rooms, uh, it's the whole package, okay? So like with Brian, we use Brian as an example. Let's say he, he got a job. It, 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 it was the pay cut, but they had on-site daycare, which would allow his spouse to work, right? Now, that changes everything, doesn't it? So do you get, if, if in your spot, can you work from home? How much does that save you in gas? It, does, how much does that save you in, in buying lunch? In, 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 in peace of mind, money is not everything. And, and, and this is coming from a guy who was homeless. Okay, money is not everything. Happiness, job satisfaction, the ability to go to sleep knowing that you did something for somebody in some way. I'll take that all day. That's me though. Um, do a financial assessment with somebody. Sit down. If, if you have a significant other, sit down with that person. Okay. What do you need to live? What money are you bringing in already? If you're retired, you're bringing in a retirement. If, you, if you're dis disabled, then you're bringing in a disability that's tax-free. If, uh, if, if you have a spouse that's working, then you're bringing in that. So let's take all that money together see what it is and see how much you need to live. And then from there, now that opens up the world, right? Because if you don't need, if you don't need $100,000 and after all the other money, you only need $50,000 to live. 
right? To be where you're at, that $50,000 is, uh, you know, opens up the spectrum because it's easier to get a 50000 job than it is to get a six-figure job. And, so uh, I hope you saw the chat, Latoya. Robert threw some more stuff in there. Uh, Robert's just killing it as usual. We appreciate mm -hmm. you. Yes. Uh, Thanks, Stacey. Guys. Stacey's the last one to, to speak before we um, um, close it out. And uh, we'll, we'll have a happy hour if anybody, well, I should say a happy 15 minutes if anybody wants it. Because <laughs> um, I want to go and get off the computer now. <laughs> because <laughs> i've been on before you guys all got on yes yeah. uh stacy what you got here hi everybody so uh, just to piggyback on what shelly rose said about process of elimination you know in math class and, and alfredo about the quality of life so you know i've heard it said that you ask the right questions then you get the right answers and that's really important and i'm, I'm learning i'm a civilian ally and supporter a, a, a transition coach and educator and i've been learning and hearing from y'all that certain questions are not being asked and i'm going to put in the chat a few different things one i created a free on-demand class for you it's called the three month vision guide. And it really helps you think holistically about your life. So your career vocation, but also your education, your health, physical health, mental health, emotional health, spiritual health, like all of that relationships um, that nobody, a lot of people really aren't thinking about because you're rushing into the career and rightfully so, but then you're getting there and the word is fulfillment and you're not feeling fulfilled. This is what I've been learning um, also. There's a skill bridge resource guide, which I put together inspired by a, a talk Alfredo did. And in that there are, again, more life questions to ask yourself. And there's a journal page about understanding the why of your goals. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing, what does that bring you? Why are you doing that? What does that bring you? And a lot of times you're just doing thinking on a surface level, but this will really, really give you a chance to sit in quiet in reflection and really go through that. So I just wanted to let you guys know that, you know, it's important, like Alfredo said, not just to think about, you know, what job, what's that going to get me and make me, but quality of life. So, um, so that's, that's it. I'm going to put that in the chat. Thank you, Stacy. So Brian, what, what are you tapping? Do we want to go to Tim real quick to end it? So this guy's hand up. Yeah. Uh, so, all right. First, I'm going to say thank you all for coming to the event. It officially ends in one minute. So um, don't blame me if you stay on a little bit later um, because you could have gotten off at any time you wanted to, all right? <laughs> so I don't want to hear, I don't want to see in the in the post surveys or anything that, hey, they, they made us stay till blah, blah, blah. No, I didn't make you do anything. And you're in your own house. So stop <laughs> being like that, all right? Um, but yeah, uh, we're, at, we're at the end. So if you wanted to leave, well, you could have leave, left. Um, and if you want to stay for the next 15 minutes, uh, we will uh, answer any more questions you have. Okay, back to you, Alfredo. All right, go ahead, Tim. Yeah, so actually, I just want to chime in on something that um, was talked about earlier and how, and I, I know Brian has mentioned it several times during the VTI events about how, like, TAP, like, TAP isn't enough for, for service members, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the guy, I've talked with our TAP coordinator here on the island and everything and i i i just I, you know because like as, as a as a you know as a rencio who's about to retire right i i didn't know about any of this stuff until six months ago mm -hmm. and i i just feel like instead of saying hey tap is only for the guys who are about to retire there there should be some type of way to focus like a mid-career tap on like that like nco like really like that like NCO to like senior NCO level, right? Because like we, we've all gone to that NCO PD where you talk about awards and NCO ERs and, and going to schools and, you know, PT and mentoring soldiers sure. and da, 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 right? But I, I don't know about anyone else. I've never gone to an NCO PD where they said, hey, do you know about vest entry? Do you know about four block? Do you know about this, that, and the other, right? And that's cool. Like, how many times can you tell me how to write an NCOER or an eval, right? How many times can you tell me how to write an award, right? Shit, I can, I can go over that 15 times a year, but bro, how do I, how do I 
how do I really set myself up for success? How do well, I set my soldier up for success? Sean, you got your hand up? Yeah, yeah I, I just want to listen, man. I, I, I hear you, you know, but you got to understand, you know, some, some other things too, you know, um, the military is the military and the military wants to uh, retain people and keep people and, and have people in the military do military stuff, right? right? And although the military has a responsibility to prepare us for the business community from when we get out, that's not their primary mission, you know, and you know, I, I mean, I, and, I, and I don't mean to be heavy handed when I say yeah. that, but I, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm sharing with you that, you know, one of the reasons why we get out of the military is because we want our lives back, right? Because we're and, tired of the yeah. military. <laughs> yeah. and, and people who have no, have no military affiliation have always had their lives. And, and for those people, they're most of the people who are in the business community. So, you know, I, I'm just saying, I, I'm just want to, you know, just kind of shift your perspective a little bit. You're right. Tap is not enough. And the people, I'm, I'm a guy who ran a TAP program, and I know it wasn't enough, but TAP is not supposed to be the end-all, be-all. TAP is like, you know, I'm opening the door for you, and then you got to walk through and take advantage of all the things that I'm presenting as far as resources. And not only that, you have to have, a, you know, an attitude of, you know, I want to find out some more. You know, I I, I mean, that, that one of the things that I did, you know, was I... Man, I was on a computer as much as I could and Googling the hell out of everything I, I possibly could. And I still didn't find the right opportunity for me when I, when I first got out. I went into manufacturing. It was a great paying job. It was a great opportunity how to make uh, aluminum cans. It was, a, it, was a, it, was, it was awesome, right? But you know what? I realized you know, in, a, in, a few, in a few months that I didn't like them and they didn't like me. You know what I mean? And I couldn't wait to get the heck on out of there because... I, this wasn't the environment that I was going to be thri going to thrive in. And I, and, and you know what? Nobody told me, and I didn't know that. Like it was mentioned before, I had to kind of figure that out. So I took a $30,000 pay cut to come home, right? And, and do something that made me happy. You know, so I, I, I'm just, I'm just sharing with you, man, that yeah. I hear what you're saying. And there's a lot that, you know, the tap and, and uh, the military can do for us, you know, as far as getting out. But, I, you know, if you think about it, it's come a long way. I mean, you know, it's only in the last 20, maybe 25 years that the TAP program even started to become more robust. You know what right. I mean? So, you know, if you were in the 80s getting out, you didn't get none of this, right? Yeah, um, we didn't get none of this in, in 05 when I got out, man. Forget about the 90s. <laughs> there you go, right? You know, so, you know, the thing that, and, 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 it's, got, and it got, it's guys like Brian and, and everybody here who's, who got out and didn't necessarily have the best transition, you, Tim, you, you may not be having the best transition, but then, you know, what you can do when you get out is maybe, you know, you can reach back to the military and try to help somebody who's who's transitioning. You know what I mean? And we we, we can do all those things without Uncle Sam. You know what I mean? We got LinkedIn, right? We can just you know, give ourselves, you know, we don't need Veterati or uh, American Corporate Partners. We can just make ourselves available. People contact yeah. me all the time and just want to talk. And I'm not on Veterati and I'm not on ACP. But, you know, I, I talk I'll let to, Dan hear you. I know. <laughs> You know, let me, I, uh, you know, let, but, me, words. I, let, let me hit you, I, let me hit you with two truths. Okay. And they're going to sound shitty. Okay. <laughs> Number one, nobody prepared you to get in the military. The military didn't prepare you to get in. You prepared <laughs> yourself. Okay. Facts. So, so nobody's going to prepare you to get out. Yeah. You got to prepare yourself. And it sure as hell is not going to be on the military. That's yeah. number one. OK, number two is you have to do the research. You don't know what you don't know. And that's fair. Right. Tap isn't there to tell you what you don't know. Tap is there to give you an idea. And it took me years to figure this out. Tap is there to give me an idea of where I need to start to look. Yeah. No, okay? I... uh, so, so tap wasn't going to give me everything. Yeah, because no, again, I, I agree. Right. Yeah, no, uh, go ahead, Tim. But I, I agree 100 with you and Sean, right? Like, because just like me, like when I when I went I, I went to TAP six months ago, and since then, like every day, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on you know right. I'm, I'm I'm on all these resources, right? And it's because again, like it's TAP's not TAP's not going to give me TAP's going to open the book for me. I've got to be the one to turn all the pages. Right. Right. And it, it just it's I guess I guess what I'm what I was getting at was the 
how do I explain it? Is that, you know, for that, you know, you got that mid-career soldier, right? You got sure. that, that, hang on, buddy. You got that second class, that specialist, that corporal, the senior airman, you know, who, who's on the fence, right? And he, he's not really sure. And so if he goes to a tech sergeant, um, a staff sergeant, uh, you know, whatever, he's like, hey, you know, what, what can you tell me? Well, he, he only knows the military, right? He's going to be like, yeah, bro, the, the name of your branch is fucking awesome, right? We get to go kick in doors. We get to do whatever it is, right? That's really cool, right? And so then they go to tap, and let, let's say the guy's 24, right? I, I don't know many 24-year-olds 20, that can have that forethought, right? And, and this, I guess what I'm getting at is like trying to find a way for that, like, E6, E7 to go to have more knowledge to educate. That's why I'm trying to get vets to industry in all the professional military educations in the entire um, service. That's what I'm driving towards. Yeah. So that every single rank, um, when they go to their leadership training or the professional development school, learns about vets to industry, the free resources, so that they can actually speak to helping their, uh, their service members, their troops, to understand there is a, a another another layer that you need to learn prior to getting out so they get this before tap um that's my goal that's one of my goals um yeah and tim understand again that that e67 they want to keep you in and they don't know what's out there because they haven't looked at what's out there they haven't transitioned you know uh, yeah I, I i always say don't ever take transition advice from somebody in uniform because they have a transition. Lee, you got your hand up? Yeah, I just wanted to share just kind of a personal story on the flip side as we talk to the junior to mid-level. The One of the challenges that I've been faced with is when they look at me and they say 30 years, you know, senior person on the installation as far as the enlisted side, and they're like, oh, we don't have anything at your level. It's like, I'm, you I'm don't not tell looking them to that. come in and What's that? You don't tell them that. You you have 10 years of experience in everything. Well, and, and I, I trust me, yeah, I've, I've, I've got great advice on that. Of, But when they say I've been in for 30 years and what were you doing? I can't lie, right? And it's like, well, why, I was, why do they need to know you've been in for 30 years? They're not going to know unless you tell them. Yeah. Okay. So okay. leave that out so, of the elevator pitch? Uh, yes. 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 I, I, you're okay. not a 30 year veteran of whatever. And I, like yeah. Brian just said, you only I only need to know the last 10. Because here's the reality, okay? okay? Um, whatever you did 30 years ago, you didn't. You're not doing today, okay? Yeah. So why are you, you telling to dust me that you, off? Yeah, why, why are you telling me that that you've been in the, the military for 30 years? I don't give a I don't give a damn how you scrub a shitter. I give a damn that 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 you supervise or or how you manage the supervisors of the people who scrub the shitters. That's what I care about. I don't care how okay. you did it, how you made them shine. And that's 30 years ago. So like Brian said, last 10 years. Okay, yeah. because that's going to show that progression of leadership. Yeah. Right. And, and I, I keep my conversation to that scope when I talk about what it, it's, it's really the only time that the 30 comes up is how long I was in the Air Force. And that's, that's a great point. I hadn't thought of it. It's just like, no, I'm just, I'm transitioning out of the Air Force and I'm looking to do whatever. Yes. That's, yep. That's transition good. is and the it. right word. Transition is the right word. Don't say retire. No, okay. Man. Somebody just put that in, in, in the, uh, in the comments. Okay. Remember we speak different languages. Okay. Civilians and military. You could join the military at 18, do 20 years, retire at 38. And you, you say retire young. on the outside. Right. Uh, uh, they, you know, people, they think you're in your 60s. Hey, yeah, yeah, you're 62 if you're retiring out on the outside. So what does the word retire mean? It means to me as a civilian you're not that you're old, yeah. that you don't need the money. You're doing it because your spouse wants you out of the house. You can, they you're going to be lazy. Anymore. You're going to be lazy. And, and worst of all, you're going to quit if you get any pushback from me because Fast. of how you're doing things. It costs me money to hire somebody. Like thirty grand, most I, uh, usually. Why am I going to spend thirty grand on an old person? And if you need a security background check, it's even more. My son for an internship at Lockheed Martin, they dropped I think forty grand for a security check. That's for an intern. They brought, they invited him back for a second internship, and they hired him. The funny thing about internships, if those of you going to college, you can get them. 
they have to they don't have to but they tend to hire you at a higher pay rate because you actually been working there so my son had two internships with lockheed when he graduated he was actually offered a job before he before he graduated but he got he started out as a engineer step level one or whatever rather than a basic engineer just does this help lee Oh, that was that was beautiful. I mean, I've I've had a lot of people go over my yeah, your elevator pitch sounds great, but it's just been as I do the networking in person here locally and stuff. It's I'll get immediate. It's the it's shocking yeah. the first time. It's like oh, we don't have anything at that level, right? It, okay, it, it, let me it, let me. That's good. The, Thank you. The the other thing is, um, I can't ask you questions. I can't ask you how old you are. I can't ask you sexual orientation. I can't ask you if you're married. I can't ask you your disability. I can't ask you re your religion. Nope. But nope. you can tell on yourself. Remember the story I said about the girl who had the, the, the rainbow flag. And now if you sit there and you tell me, let's say you let, let's say you tell me you're Catholic and I'm agnostic. OK, well, now I, I, I don't want you I could, because my belief is you're going to come in here preaching Jesus. I don't need that. So now I've just gotten rid of you in the hiring process. And my answer, if you come up to me, is I had better candidates, right? I'm not going to say, well, because he's a Christian or he's or he's Jewish or or he's a Democrat or he's Republican or I'm not going to say any of that. I'm going to just say I had better candidates, and there's nobody who can prove me wrong because I didn't ask you the questions you're giving me the answers to. So All don't right, well, we have me. two minutes yeah, left. We got two minutes left, so any parting words? Hey, yeah, Brian. Hey, you asked me, and I'll bring it up at the next V2I. But, uh, hey, for all of you that are still here, remember, if you're living next to a military base, there's something called a VRA appointment. It's a veteran recruitment appointment. It's a hire. It's a direct authority hire where they can hire you without, uh, what is it called, competition with the general population, that kind of thing. There's also other hires, which are called non-appropriated funds. But these type of hires, uh, you could walk in at, with a disability rating and they can say, hey, we're looking for somebody with this disability rating. You can say, hey, put me on a wait list. If you have anything that opens up, they can just call you and hire you flat out on a hiring authority. Now, uh, Chip would be better at kind of explaining kind of how that all works and probably hope to. But those are different hiring authorities you really don't know about. And you can go into the HR offices at the different military bases because they, ha they have the reps. And they can they you can be put on a wait list for those type of jobs. A lot of people forget about these type of jobs too. DECA is the commissary, okay? But DECA has the the GS type workers, the ones that work there, and then they have the workers that are like gig workers, like my son who was working between college, where he was doing a three hour shift, getting 130 bucks for bagging groceries. Okay, it's great money, you know. All you gotta do is help. You know, Miss Jones take her groceries to the, you know, her car if she wants it. If not, you just sit in there bagging the groceries. And, you know, obviously you're going to get the dollar tip, but you're going to get five dollars, whatever. Some days are better than others. But my son said, hey, it was great. Three hours he'd work because he was young. He put in and did six hours back to back, was coming home with lots of dollar bills that he would put in the bank account. Right. And he was only home for, you know, three months at a time and would go back to college. But these are jobs you have available on base. You know that they want to they want to eat up right now um, at the military installations right now because no one's applying for them. You know, and you already have access to the base. That's a plus. All right, and thanks, Robert. Um, I'd like to just uh, close you out with uh, saying our next event is November fifth. It's the Mill Spouse Mixer. But please, if you're a service member or veteran, go because networking doesn't care what the name of the event is. Okay. So go and network. Um, also, our next virtual networking event is uh, November 19th. So put that on your calendar, save the date. Uh, if you go to our events page on bestindustry.org, we have posted the 2023 calendar. So you can actually save the date for every single event that we have scheduled for next year. The only thing that's not on that calendar that will happen are our webinars that we provide well, where we teach salary negotiation, resume writing, interview techniques, dress for success, financial literacy, TSP rollover, because nobody tells us about that uh, getting out. Um, so um, you'll look for that 
Um, you'll also be looking for an email, post-event email. If you have not put Vets to Industry as a safe um, organization in your uh, email, please do, because then you're missing out on all of our post-event emails, which have with it the link to our YouTube channel for the entire video of this event. So anything you miss, you'll be able to recap and look at. You'll also get the whole main chat transcript. Um, that's going to provide you all the all the information that was put in the main chat, um, like the uh, recruiters uh, contact information, the open job roles, the links, um, I mean, everything, uh, probably like 80 pages. So um, you probably take you four weeks to go through it right till the next event. Then uh, you also uh, receive the LinkedIn URLs of everybody who registered for the event and did the pre-event survey. You have to do the pre-event survey for us to have got your LinkedIn URLs, and then we will send that out. So that if you didn't connect with somebody that you meant to, or you just want to connect with everyone who was here, go ahead and do that and send them a personalized message just saying, hey, I, I, I was at the V2Y event. If you just say, I was at the V2Y event, everybody's going to connect with you, everybody at the event. Um, uh, if you it's, you know personally found something amazing about the story of an individual and want to reach out, put that in the personalized message, something like that, so you can build a, a relationship. Now, after this event, this was just a um, speed dating, speed networking event. Okay, The whole purpose of this is not to have given you enough time to learn everything you can about each other or about every role. It was just to, to kind of wet your beak so that you will set up calls with all the people that you met and, and follow up with all the things. Follow up is the most important thing this week and the next week. So set up calls with all the people that you met that you wanna have uh, more conversations with. Um, and then um, that's the key. That's the key to these V2I networking events. Uh, speed dating until you get to uh, to the week, and then you're making all your calls, your 15 to 30 minute informational interviews or uh, chats with the recruiters about uh, whatever, um, you know, or open roles. So um, plan plan accordingly once you finish an event that you're going to have that next week kind of booked with uh, with calls as you can make them. All right. Hey, um, yeah. Brian, uh, aren't, aren't we going to be at an event? Near Vegas oh, at the end of the month? So smart. Um, so yeah, Vets to Industry is boothing at the, and I know boothing is not a word, but it's the only word that makes sense to me. All right. So we're boothing at, an, at the Military Influencer Conference in Las Vegas uh, on the 26th of October to the 29th. So if anyone is in the Vegas area, we're going to do a, a get together, an in person networking uh, uh, event. Every time I go somewhere, um, I try to pull everyone local uh, and anyone who wants to fly in, you know, so be it. And we're going to have uh, in-person networking at some some location. We'll find something. Uh, and, and in we'll Vegas, just are we going to find a place to meet in Vegas? If it has to be the hotel lobby, uh, we've done that before. How about we we'll meet talk. right DC. by the slot machines? <laughs> but um, uh, I hope I hope everybody found value in, in this uh, event. Um, I know it's long, but um, I just, I do it so that the West Coast can come on, overseas can come on, the East Coast can come on all at the same time and gain the amount of uh, knowledge and information that, that you have. If there's something better that we can do or you think, it doesn't mean I'm going to go with it, but if there's something that you think we could do better, then go ahead and, and send an email to support at vets2industry.org with, uh, with what you think would work. Um, if you don't like the order of how we do things with the recruiters talking and then um, veteran service organizations and then veteran owned spouse owned businesses and then uh, having everybody talk about, uh, that are getting out. Uh, if you don't like that, uh, then let me know. Uh, but this is that's the best way I've, I've found so far to run these events. All right. Um, sorry, I lied to you. We're five minutes over. Um, but you stayed. So, haha. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, love you all. Uh, if you can, um, we do accept donations. I'm just saying um, five to $10 would, would go a long way, especially if it's a recurring donation each month. Um, just just a little little thing. It, it, it really helps us out a lot. Um, and we don't ask for money often. Um, uh, 
often enough, like some some charities do, and we really should. <laughs> that's the only way that we live. But uh, thank you, everybody, and have a great night. Have a great night, everybody. Thank and make you. Make sure you go to Alfredo's Coffee House tomorrow at twelve. If you Thanks, want more everyone. information, good night, everybody. Yeah, hey, you'll Mom, see. Thanks. You'll see Lee there. Hi. Brian. <laughs> you. Yep. And Stacy. Yeah, but that's early. It's it's I know it's in the middle of the day it's, for me. That means I give up my whole day. Coast. And Susan will be there. She actually talks every now and then. It's amazing. All right, I'll pray. It's gonna be a great start well. to my day. That's early morning. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye.